from Dinwiddie High School in Southern Virginia. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of the second round of the 4A playoffs as the visiting Cyclones have made the approximate 130 mile trip down here to Southern Virginia to take on last year's 4A runner-up team, the Dinwiddie Generals, in what promises to be a heck of a football game. I'm Mark O'Connell, joined in the pregame by Chris Capella. Steve Peacock will be catching up with us at the start of the broadcast. Chris, welcome aboard. And this is a game we've been talking about for a long time. We've made it. One of the things that really stands out to me here at Dinwiddie is just how friendly and accommodating this uh, Dinwiddie staff and the and the uh, home crowd is. Well, yeah, they have been. We got we go up to the press box. We got snacks. We got coffee. And I think they know that there's a lot of eyes on this game. There's going to be a lot of media at this game. So it just goes to show how excited everyone is for this big matchup. Well, Dinwiddie's been to the big show before. You know, they won a state title 2013. They were in the state finals last year and played Salem and lost in a, a very entertaining game. Then the, in the regular season, they beat Salem. I think that makes a statement for Dinwiddie. They're the number one ranked team for good reason, but I'm not so sure they've played anybody of the caliber of Eastern View, and I think Eastern View, uh, well, of course, you know, they got the numbers to prove it. They have lit, lit up the scoreboard, averaging about 55 points a game. And they haven't given up much defensively, and tonight they can't give up anything at all. Absolutely, and like we've seen Easterview so far this season, I mean, they've done everything that you could have possibly asked for them to do with the schedule that they've played. So, yes, Dinwiddie might have played a few more big, high-profile games, but Easterview's taking care of business the best that they possibly can. Speaking of Easterview, let's catch up with our skipper, Coach Hatfield, and see what he has to say about tonight's game. Coach, congratulations on the Easterview getting to the second round of the playoffs, and Except for last season, the second round had been historic, historically a stumbling block for the team. I don't suppose there could be a tougher matchup along the way than to have tonight's matchup against Dinwiddie. What's the m mindset of your Cyclones tonight? i tell you what, we're excited for the opportunity to be here. You know that uh, things are going well when you get to come to Dinwiddie when it's playoff time. You know, obviously they're a great football team, got a tremendous tradition, and we're going to show up and give them our best effort. Well, one of the gentlemen here tonight uh, told me that it's really a statement game for Eastern View uh, in a lot of ways, uh, but uh, and that the two teams sort of mirror each other with uh, similar offenses and uh, individuals and athletes that have posted some comparable numbers. Coach, do you, do you think it's going to be a really tough, hard-fought, close game tonight? Uh, or what do you think the keys are to Eastern View's success? I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be like it is when any – two good football teams get together who's going to protect the football you know it's going to come down to four or five big plays and who can make those and and you know this is we're again we're excited for the opportunity to be here and uh i, I like our guys and i i like the way we play and we're gonna we're gonna show up and give them what we got before i turn you over to chris i mean if Eastern of you wins tonight if there were any doubters in the state about how good Eastern you is i think it's going to eliminate a whole lot of that Chris, I know you've got a couple of questions for the coach. Coach, I know you guys are facing a dual threat quarterback today. What are maybe some of the keys to try and, and keep an a, an athlete like Pope in the pocket? Well, I, you know, like we got to, we're not going to stop him. We got to contain him. Uh, he's too good for that. When we get a chance to tackle him, we got to tackle him. If we can force a turnover, that's, you know, that that would obviously be to our advantage. And you know, I just want to touch on what you said about, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, a statement game for us or proving our, you know, I. We hear that chatter, and we're the new kids on the block, and we're fighting hard to come in. But, you know, to say to come in down here to say that we have to beat Dinwiddie to make a statement, uh, you know, I don't think that's fair to our kids. And I'm not saying that you said that, but right. I know there's a lot of people that are. And, you know, I think what these kids have done over their four years here is pretty good. And I'm not saying that. We're going to – we feel like we can come in here and, and win this football game, and we're going to give it everything we got too. But, yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, and, 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 again, I'm not being – Right, I understand. Yeah, I just our kids have done a good job over four years, and one game's not going to – Right. It, it wouldn't dictate our success, and it won't dictate our failure. And that's and it's good perspective, Coach, and I agree with that 100%. I think the nature of sports is that if you're a team like Dinwiddie, where you've been there as recently yeah, as oh, last yes. year. Right. And right. then you've beaten the team that beat you last year. It's like people are noticing you, and then you got somebody else like Eastern View, and, you know, you guys are – have, have uh, done a lot of great things. The, it hasn't been lost in the program, and it might be your favor because uh, people can look past you when, in, under those circumstances. They certainly might, and a team maybe not as well prepared as what Billy's going to have his team, you mm -hmm. know, maybe would. And, and again, it's, you know, we're, we're working to be like Dinwiddie and, and be here every year and have these opportunities every year. So we're, we're excited, 
and uh, hopefully you all get to see a heck of a football game tonight. We're pretty sure we're going to see a heck of a game. Thanks for joining us. Yes, Good sir. luck, Coach. Always great to work Thank with you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you well, Chris, uh, he's uh, really put, uh, I think Coach Hatfield really put things in perspective. Uh, I mean, in one sense, you could argue it's a statement game for both teams, but I think he really uh, uh, explained very well how it's not really that for Eastern Union because they have accomplished a lot in their own right, and they know they belong here. Right, and, and they're very secure in who they are and what they've accomplished as a football team, not just this year, but like Coach Hatfield said, the past four years with this group. And I think a team that's secure in what they are and also hungry to prove to, like he said, what the rest of these naysayers might be saying, that's a dangerous combination. Well, you know, and I don't think there's any question that here we are in the second round of the playoffs, and each of you not only gets the number one seed, out of Dinwiddie, but they get the number one team in all of 4A. I mean, this could be the biggest test Eastern View will have. I mean, and if they win tonight, I mean, then you start you start thinking you got to like their chances against anyone. Absolutely, and we've talked about this before in the past, just how tough this region is. The Region 4B is the only region with four undefeated teams, and they're all remaining, so it's going to be a great battle tonight. Like you said, this will be the toughest matchup Dimwitty, or Eastern View's faced all year. This might be the toughest matchup that Dimwitty's faced all year, too, and whoever wins this game, it could be the best team that they play all season. So this is a big boy matchup if we've ever seen one. There are a lot of eyes on this game. Absolutely. Well said. Chris, thanks for joining us in our pregame show. Uh, Steve will be catching up with us during the broadcast and of course we hope you want to mic you up for your uh, before the start of the third quarter for your first half analysis. I know we're in for a great game. Steve and I are looking, to, are looking forward to calling it. I know you're looking forward to watching it and then writing about it. This is probably as good as it gets uh, short of a state championship game. It's, this is. You're right. This is as good as it gets, Mark. All right. We'll take a break. When we come back, team captains will meet in the center of the field for tonight's coin toss. Stay tuned. You're watching the second round of the 4A playoffs between the visiting Cyclones and the home team Dinwiddie General. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet, and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. Well, welcome to our broadcast of tonight's second round playoff here in the 4A classification as the visiting Cyclones take on the number one rated team, the number one seeded, Dinwiddie Generals. I'm Mark O'Connell alongside Steve Peacock. Johnny Krawchuk, the man behind the camera tonight. Steve, I think this is as team captains face off here for the coin toss. This is probably, I think, since the inception of Eastern View, uh, the biggest game I think that they've ever been asked to play. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Mark. I mean, every, last year they had Lafayette in the third round. That was obviously a big game, and Piece of you came in on the short end and stick on that one. But this one, two undefeated teams, second round in the playoffs. Uh, arguably probably the, the toughest region 4B, you know, in the state under the 4A classification. I would say 
of toughest region, probably of all classifications. You got four undefeated teams in this region still playing tonight, and big game again tonight for Eastern View against the Dinwiddie Generals. Well, Dinwiddie won the toss, and they deferred. The and the the receive the, the, the kickoff. So this is really the ultimate test, maybe for both teams. Uh, I'm certain that Eastern View has not played a team of Dinwiddie's caliber this season. And I'm pretty certain Dinwiddie hasn't played a team of Eastern View's caliber. No, and I, I think you're right. I mean, I'm, I, I would say, you know, Dinwiddie said they played Thomas Dale, class six team, is in the playoff. And they beat them. They beat Hopewell. Hopewell was state runner up last year in Division Three. But uh, again, I still think uh, tonight is going to be a test of both teams. You got both similar offenses, both uh, defenses give up very few points. Both offenses score a lot of points. Thumb's got to give tonight. We're going to see right now, right here on the field tonight. This is a great crowd here uh, at Dinwiddie High School, also known as Navy Nation, because Navy is the primary color of these Dinwiddie Generals. See, they've been to the big dance before. Last year, they were in the 4A state finals. Lost a very exciting game to Salem. But then, then here in the regular season, Dinwiddie and Salem played each other, and Dinwiddie won by a score of 19 to 14. Uh, and they've just been uh, rated number one for a long time. They have some tremendous athletes. Some people say that these two teams are mirror images of each other. They have similar players and skill positions that have posted some similar or comparable numbers. And uh, one thing that I think that stands, well, actually two things that I think that stands out for the Eastern View Cyclones, Steve, is the uh, production of its offensive line and the swarming defense that's going to be very important for them tonight because Dinwiddie has some explosive players who you're going to have to swarm to them and make them do a good job of tackling them. But we're going to see each of you on offense uh, to start tonight's game as uh, Dinwiddie will tee it up to kick off. And uh, the kicker here is number 41, Todd Anspach. I'll tell you what, he's highly regarded. He hasn't missed much this year. Uh, what are we having down for? Is he? Let's see. I think he's like. Uh, he's got good range too. Uh, 53 of 54 PATs. Here's the kick. It's fielded after the hop. Still fighting for a little additional yardage as the return man there will check the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're going to have it beyond the 30-yard line. So we'll see Eastern View. Uh, they return there by. Number two, Cameron Spangler. And uh, we'll just check the spot. Looks like the, let's see what they have it marked at the 33 yard line. That's where Eastern View will set up on offense as we start this ball game. And you're getting Margaret Eastern View is going to, you know, Coach Hatfield has said he's got a few surprises in here for uh, the Dinwiddie defense. Dinwiddie brings a lot of speed, so we're gonna, it's going to be a big job for the offensive line tonight to protect us. Uh, Matt. Wow. All right. The man in motion, Diego Hunter. Here's the snap. They hand it off to Trey Holmes. Trey Holmes finds the going pretty tough right there in the opening carry. He'll pick up a couple of yards to the 35, and it'll bring up Trey second Holmes and eight. And they go no huddle here to the Cyclones. Stop. They're going to run be him, Big Adam Lillard. The 75 is going to be Kyle Smith. Big number 74, uh, Eastern View in there. Jason Southern. The center, yeah, okay, here's second and eight. Lowry's first pass. It's caught. Near a first down is Diego Hunter. And making the tackle was Josiah Williams. Looks like this is uh, very close to a first down. Looks like he's going to be about a yard shy. Pretty good play call there on the second down. And when you, when you complete that kind of pass, it's going to give you a little bit of confidence there and a very manageable third and one here at the 44. That's Hunter in motion. They fake it to him to go to Trey Holmes. Hit hard. He may have had enough forward progress to get the first down. And that was number 81, that uh, Division I prospect, Kayvon uh, Pope makes the tackle. And he's going to Ohio State next year, I understand. Yep, One of the best looking tackles I've seen all year. Held him to no gain and it's fourth and one, and they're lined up to go for it here. Long snap count. You just gonna be surprised, they're still gonna go for it. I thought they'd kick this one, but. 
And he got it. You, uh, do you think he got it on the second effort there? It's going to be close. He needed about a half a yard. Right. What a gutsy call to go for it on fourth down early in the game like this, Steve. And it is. It is a first down. Wow. Out to the 44, first and 10. They went for it on fourth and a yard. Actually, a little less than a yard. Pays off this time. Here's Diego Hunter on the end of round. Hunter looking for some room. He got some. Good job there. He crosses midfield into Dinwiddie territory at the 49. A pickup of six and second and four coming up. And you know that uh, Eastern View really wants to get Diego Hunter with some possessions. And Mark, they got to account for 81. Kayvon Pope all mm -hmm. over the field. He is, he's their linebacker, but he's all over the field. And he, they've got to count for him right now. His quickness is bothering Eastern View. Here's Trey Holmes. Holmes, good running that time. Good effort. And he got across the 45-yard uh, line. And because you look at Dinwiddie, they're not real big up front on the, from a defensive line standpoint compared mm -hmm. to the offensive line. But see, what they get by with on their defense is their quickness. And this is cool. a, yeah, and that was a first down. Their second first down this drive, Steve. Mm -hmm. They'll have it first and 10 now from the 44-yard line. And they swing it out to Diego Hunter. And they do a nice job there of pursuit and containment to hold Diego to no gain, and he may have actually lost a yard. So the Cyclones are mixing it up here with the run in the pass, and uh, Diego Hunter lost a couple yards. Back to the 46-yard line where it's second and 12. There's Lowry throwing near side. Oh, this one incomplete. He tried to get it out there to Zach Thomas. Thomas lost his footing and stopped, and the ball was overthrown. Now we got a third and 11 coming up. Yeah, now this is why each of you doesn't want to be in these third long situations, Mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially with Dinwiddie's quickness here. So uh, we'll see what's going to be interesting here. But look for Diego Hunter or Trey Holmes to be involved some sort of way. Or maybe a slant pass to Zach Thomas. Noah Proctor's in there. Camden Lewis, Zach Thomas. That's Trey Holmes in motion. Here's Lowry throwing. Going up for Noah Proctor. Incomplete. He was in double coverage out there. No chance. And now we'll have a fourth and 11 from the 46-yard line. And I was thinking yeah, Eastern View is going to punt. One of the rare times we've seen Eastern View punt this year. Not, not many. Not many. Early on in the season, I wondered if they would even need a punter. Well, Zach Thomas back near his 40-yard line. So the Cyclones put together a couple of first downs before they ultimately had to turn it over on down. Uh, go to a fourth and punting situation. This one fielded just inside the nine-yard line. Nice <laughs> coverage by the Cyclones. <laughs> and they'd swarm to a they, mark. And they certainly they didn't let did. Him get out of there, I can tell you that. The return man, the dangerous Josiah Williams, nowhere to go. And Dinwiddie will go on offense for the first time tonight, and they'll start on their own Nine-yard line, or actually they mark it right at the 10. And, you know, it's a very interesting where we are in the press box. You mean most press boxes are in the middle of the field, but we're right here on the 30-yard line. Mm-hmm. Kamon Pope is the quarterback. He's a good one. He's a dual threat. Here he goes, running the ball on first down. Here's Pope. Great job by Eastern View swarming to the ball carrier like they've done all season. And, see, we talked about that. That's probably going to be one of their keys to success tonight is that continuing swarming to the football. Swarm to the football and go to the football. Led there by Diego Hunter right there on that tackle mark. Got a yard. It's second and nine. Came on Pope. Handing off. Ball carrier. Number six. Out to about the 15-yard uh, line. That's Zion Sturdivant. He is the team's leading uh, rusher with over 1,000 rushing yards this season. He got to the 16. It's third and four. Brought down by, uh, right there on that play, by Avery Sites. So here's a big third down early on in the game for both teams as Dinwiddie has it, third and four from the 16. Empty backfield now for Kamon Pope, the quarterback. He throws. Oh, this one incomplete. He was open in the flat. Would have been a first down intended for Zion Sturdivant out of the backfield. That's a big break for the Cyclones, Steve. He was open and would have had a first down. Three and out. That's what the Cyclones needed right there. Mark against the Generals to set a statement to on defense, force them to a three and out, and that's what they did. And I didn't think that Denwood was going to go for it here on fourth down, just deep in their own territory. Todd Anspach is the punter standing near the goal line. 
and Diego Hunter back for the Cyclones, standing at his own 45. High snap over his head, going to go out of the end zone, and that'll be a safety for the Cyclones. Our first, our first points tonight come on a botched special teams play as the high snap sends the ball in and out of the end zone, and the Cyclones are up 2-0, Steve. And that, and that was right there, and I was going to say, Mark, whoever in this game is going to be a battle of turn. Whoever wins the turnover battle is going to win this football game, and right now Easter View is plus one in the turnover battle. That snap was over the head, and it was a safety, and the punter did the right thing for Dinway. He didn't pick it up and try to run it out. It would, if he got tackled in zone, it would have been a, uh, you know, still a safety. He just let it go and let it uh, roll out of bounds. Now uh, Easter View is up two to nothing. And then we'll have the free kick coming up. From Dinwiddie to Eastern U, we have seven minutes and 47 seven seconds to play here in the first quarter. Second round of these 4A playoffs in probably the most loaded region in all of high school football here in Virginia this season. Would you agree with this 4A in yep. this particular region where you have the top four seeds? Dinwiddie, Monacan, Louisa, Eastern View. Those top four all undefeated. And so tonight, it's the number one Dinwiddie against number four Eastern View. And the other uh, region semifinal is uh, Monacan and Louisa County. Here's the punt. And it's a fair catch called, called for at the 40-yard line. So as the, uh, that one was uh, taken by Noah Proctor. So as the Cyclones come back on the field for the second time to go on offense, Steve, they'll have really good field position and a 2-0 lead. 2-0 lead. Now see if they can capitalize on this. Uh, Mistake by Dinwiddie, even though it was a safety and it's 2 nothing. the Cyclones lead. Now the Cyclones, here's where you want to throw a dagger mark. Mm -hmm. Here's where you want to sit there and, you know, strike quick, maybe with a big play or, or a sustained drive and uh, see if they can get on the scoreboard with a touchdown. Matt Lowry back there with running back Trey Holmes. They load up this left side. They give it to Holmes. Here's a pitch. Zach Thomas going. Oh, this one was a trick play. Uh -huh and the option to pass it, and he was looking for Cameron Spangler. He had it open in the middle of the field, and the pass was too short. Pass was too short, Mark. He had him wide open. He had him wide. He had the defense full, but that's what you got to do against this Dinwiddie defense. They're so quick, and they're really aggressive, and you got to use that aggressiveness against them. And make them guess, right? Yep. So early on, going to the bag of tricks. Here is second down and 10 for the Cyclones from their own 40-yard lot. Here's Matt Lowry. Protection holds up. He's got a receiver out there. It's caught near first down uh, the marker, and that was caught by number 12, Camden Lewis, the senior receiver. And that's enough for a Cyclone first down. And I've seen what the game plan is here. We're seeing more passing plays by uh, Eastern View than we've seen in the earlier in other earlier games. And this was the run to Trey Holmes, and it's going to be perhaps some Tough sledding going up against this Dinwiddie defense against the run. Number 49, Umar Tyson led the pack, stopping Trey Holmes, uh, who ordinarily is good for five yards to carry. It's going to be hard to average that perhaps tonight against uh, Dinwiddie's defense. Yeah, they got to run behind David Level and company and see if they can push out that uh, Dinwiddie defensive line. But Proctor in motion. They fake it to him. They throw to Zach Thomas. Here's Zach Thomas making a move. He got a little bit of yardage inside the 45-yard line to the 44. He picked up six. He's going to bring up a third and four for the Cyclones with 6.44 to play. Clock ticking, first quarter. Our score, Cyclones two, Generals nothing, and it's third and three. And, and like I said, the, what uh, each of you wants to do is try to keep uh, Dinwiddie off balance, and they're doing a good job so far. All right, here's third and three. Long snap count. Valerie looks to the sidelines. A little additional instructions here on third and three. Here's Lowry. Going to step up. Now going to throw it incomplete. Trying to get it to Zach Thomas out there. An incomplete pass brings up fourth and three from the 44-yard line. And each of you looks like they're going to punt it again, Mark. Play the field position. Play the field position. I don't blame him here. It's early in the first quarter, up mm -hmm. two to nothing. You don't want to give over a big play and turn over a downs right here. Well, Zach Thomas is the punter. And the dangerous return man back there, the most dangerous, is Josiah Williams. Wears jersey number four. Thomas standing near the inside the 45-yard line. Here's a bad snap. He did a nice job of fielding it. 
And he kicks away. This one takes a bounce that goes out of bounds near the 25-yard line. And Dinwiddie, trailing 2 nothing, sends his offensive unit back onto the field with 6.06 to play here in the first quarter. And see, Mark, the thing is that uh, East of you's got to realize that they have not played a caliber team the caliber of Dinwiddie. And so it's going to be a little different for them. They're not used to being stopped offensively like they've been stopped. Right. From the 26-yard line. They hand it to uh, Kayvon Pope on the end around. Talented receiver. Still in his feet. They didn't bring him down, but they didn't get up any yardage either. Because that's uh, the Cyclone defense uh, pursuing to the ball. And the one staying in their lane. And they took away any real estate Kayvon Pope hoped to see. Yep, they sure did, Mark, and they just that's what Eastern View does so well on defense. They swarm to that football. Actually lost a couple at second and 12. Here's Pope throwing near side, trying to set up the screen. Watch out. They need to make a tackle here. Good run off, off the screen. Play Trey Reese should have enough for a Dinwiddie first down, and he does. He got across the 40 to the 41. More than enough for a first down. They, move, they re, uh, move the sticks and they reset things here. Now they mark it at the 39. Here's Sturdivant. Sturdivant. Knocked down at the 40 yard line, I believe. No, 45, rather. It looks like, you know, Dinwiddie's trying to do that hurry up offense as well, Mark. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep uh, each of you off guard a little bit off balance. But what they got to do defensively, what they got to recognize that what Dinwiddie's trying to do is trying to get the ball to their skill players, and mm -hmm. East Dubuque's just got to still play that swarming defense. Here's the second and five for the Generals. They have it at their own 45. Here's Pope. Got time throwing. Got a receiver. Caught. First down yardage. He gets to the Eastern View 40-yard line. That was Josiah Williams. They go no huddle. They have it at the 39 of Eastern View. First and 10, Generals on the move. Sturdivant ball carrier. Breaking away from the initial hit. Sturdivant gets down to about the 30. Pick up a nine yards on the play. Second and short coming up. Mark, it looked like they had Sturdivant bottled up mm -hmm. for a short game, but he's a very strong, compact runner, and he was able to squeeze right through there. It looks like there's a timeout. It looks like an injured uh, Houston View player. Let's see if we can pick up the number. Well, we'll tell you this broadcast is made possible by Triple Image. Make your clothes speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image at 829-1050. The injured Cyclone player down on the field. We have four minutes and 35 seconds to play here in the first quarter. And uh, we'll take a break and come back with the Generals looking at a second and one from the Cyclone 30. Back after this. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams, and do your best. 
Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. All right, back to our broadcast. We understood that the uh, player who was shaking up was Cullen King. And after this uh, injury timeout, then when he has it, second and one from the Eastern View 30 yard line. Kamon Pope, the quarterback, keeps it. Straight ahead he goes. Cyclones do a great job of getting to uh, Pope. We'll see if, if forward progress will give him a first down. If not, it's going to bring up third and short. This would be. Yeah, I think it's a little short. Virtually no gain on the play. So it's third and one. If you're just tuning in, Cyclones lead 2 0 off that safety. Third and one. Pope again. Well, the Cyclones do a great job of, again getting to the football, but he should have enough for a first down, and he does. He didn't need much. He didn't need much. He, he just uh, ran right there on the left side, Mark. All he needed was about a half a yard, and he got it. <clears throat> they have it marked at the 28, where it's first and 10 now for the Generals on the move. They started this drive from their own 26. They have it at the Cyclone 28. Little play action, and they throw it near side. This is Kayvon Pope. Doing his nice impression of uh, high hurdles there. He is a Division I player. Yep, he's verbally committed to Iowa State, but hasn't signed anything yet. But, I, you know, he's a good player. They're going to look for him to get to him, the ball to him in open space. Picked up about six yards. Second and four from the 22. He's fake it to Sturdivant. Pope keeps it. And Pope. Hard to bring down. He got down near the 15, maybe even the 10 yard line before they finally brought him down. It's shy of the 10. It's at the 11. First and 10 generals from the Cyclone 11 yard line. What an athlete these Pope brothers are. Yep. Came on Pope here, throwing out to uh, Josiah Williams. And uh, they stop him for a nominal gain after Williams, the team's top receiver, hauled it in for a short game. Brings up, uh, yeah, they can they can get a first down before no they second down. It's inside the tent, so they can't get a first down. Here is Josiah Williams trying to get in. Got close down to about the two. They can get a first down without having to score here because the uh, line of scrimmage was the 11. So now brings third and about. Right at the three yard line. So it'll be like uh, third and one. Maybe two. Well, this is Dinwiddie on the move, Steve. They're in position to uh, take the lead for the first time tonight on this drive. Here it is, third down. They go to Sturdivant, runs right into uh, Jacob Ashwell. And then Asheville had company coming over to stop him. Now it's fourth down and about a yard and a decision to make for the general. They're going to kick the oh. field goal with their field goal kicker, Mark. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, <laughs> but this is a big uh, win situation for each of you yep. to keep them out of the end zone in six points. So if the line of scrimmage is the three, seven, the ten, this is really a 20-yard field goal attempt. The holder is Kamon Pope, and the kicker is number 41, Todd Anspach. I think he's connected on all but one point after this, this year. This is a field goal attempt from 20 yards out, and it is good. Our score is 3-2, to two. and that's not a baseball score, but it sounds like one. And with a minute 29 to play, uh, Steve Dinwiddie uh, started this drive their own 26-yard line, and they moved down the field very methodically, and, the, and then the Eastern View defense stiffened up there at the very end to force a fourth down and uh, a field goal attempt rather than Dinwiddie getting into the end zone. That could be crucial later on. Uh, it's a, that was a definite victory for the Eastern View defense, Mark, limiting them to a field goal and not letting them get in for a touchdown. You're, I agree with you 100%. And I just saw the Dinwiddie, Dinwiddie an interesting prop on the field for the uh, 
after they score, they have a horse, a horseback rider, running the flag up and down the sideline with the general flag. So that's something you don't see every day in high school football. The only other animal prop we ever seen is Louisa, the lion. It's the Louisa. lion. It's, but and it's <coughs> possible we could see them. But that means Eastern View has to win, and Louisa would have to win for next week's showdown. Right now, we have a minute 29 to play here in the first quarter. Our score, Dinwiddie 3, Eastern View 2. Todd Anspach is the kicker. Keeps it on the ground. It's in the air. It's fielded nicely by Cohen King, and King brings it to the 30-yard line. And that's where Eastern View will set up on offense for the third time here tonight. And this broadcast is made possible by Fountain Sons, investing in youth at all levels to help make tomorrow's leaders. Fountain Sons at 825-3530. A couple of differences I've seen in tonight's matchup, uh, Steve. For Eastern View, Trey Holmes, who ordinarily gets about five yards of carry, he's found the running very tough. And then the Eastern View defense, was, which is still doing a great job of getting to the football, I think they're finding that Dinwiddie's players are harder to tackle yeah. than other teams' Dude, players. I Mark, I couldn't have said it better. You're absolutely right. And they're not used to the, this caliber of talent because they haven't faced it all year. And here's Trey Holmes running into a stone wall there. Stopped almost immediately. Omar Tyson, number 49. Makes the tackle, and we'll have a second and ten. No game for Trey Holmes, and we didn't say that many times this season. And he's not used to that either, Mark. I mean, mm -hmm. the quickness. If you look at uh, Dinwiddie's line, they're not big up front, but their job is just to occupy the offensive line, let their quick linebackers make the play. All right, here's Matt Lowry. He's throwing. He's got a receiver. It's caught. Maybe a couple yards shy of the first down. That was in the re um, caught by Blake Leak, the sophomore. And the line of scrimmage was a 30. They mark it at the 36, so he picked up six. It'll be third and four there. And see, and I think it's the big third down here play, and I think what's going to have to happen is that Eastern View is going to have to go to its pass game because it looks like Dinwiddie's dialed in on Eastern View's run game. And they do throw it here. This is Zach Thomas. Tried to shed a tackler. He may have gotten to the 40. That's where he needed to get for a first down. Uh, we'll see how close they're going to where they're going to spot it, Mark. 39 it is. It looks like it's going to be about a yard. Yeah, straight. exactly. So here's a decision for the Cyclones on fourth and one. Well, you got to punt it here. You can't give it. Uh, they look like they might go for it here. Well, it's fourth and less than a yard. They've been here before tonight, and uh, they gambled and it paid off earlier. Let's see if it will now. Matt Lowry. Long sig uh, signal count. And that actually is going to end the first quarter with our score. Dinwiddie 3, Eastern View 2. We'll take a quick break and come back for the start of the second. With the Cyclones looking at a fourth and one from their own 39-yard line. Stay tuned. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams, and do your best. 
Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. As we start the second quarter, the Cyclones are going for, or at least they line up to do so here on fourth and one from their own 39 yard line. Here's Lowry getting it to Diego Hunter. He got away, and there goes Diego Hunter. Open field, big gainer down to the 35-yard line of Dinwiddie. That is a pickup of 26 yards on a fourth and one. It looked like they had a chance to squeeze him early on on a two players converging for a tackle. Somehow he shot through there, Steve. Mark, and that was a great play, good play call there by Eastern View. Back to Trey Holmes looking for some running room. We'll get about three yards, and that's more than his average here tonight. And uh, let me on that previous play, Mark. I know mm -hmm. we didn't go to replay, but what had happened there was just line Dago up in the slot and just you know hit him in a quick hitter and able to use his speed to get that first down. But Diego's not used to being run down from behind. He was run down by a Kayvon Pope. Uh, I think the fact that he was able to uh, squirt through those first two defenders uh, was enough that is what sprung him. Obviously, there's the throw. This one was uh, intended for Leak. It was almost picked off by number 13, Daquan Wilson. But he lucky was, that one wasn't. Well, if Matt had been more accurate, he was wide open, Mark, and mm -hmm. for a little bit there, and, and uh, they just missed it. So now Eastern View has it on the Dinwiddie. 31-yard line. Third down and about six. Holmes in motion. Lowry, he's got Holmes out there. Holmes has got a first down. They bring him out the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Daquan Wilson made the tackle and saved the touchdown. And, Mark, that's what I said they're going to need to do to get Trey Holmes, get him going, get him out, so and catch him some passes on little wheel routes, little swing routes, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what they just did. Decent view. Great job of mixing up the play calling here. They have it first and goal from the five. Hunter in motion. They go to Trey Holmes. Not quite in there yet. He got down, it looked like, to about the two. And making the tackle is that, uh, Pope. yeah, Kayvon Pope, number 81. And yeah, now I'm seeing the crowd from Eastern View did show up. Mark, they're just a little late getting here. He looked across the way in a big crowd. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Second down and goal now from the two. Diego Hunter, the end around. He's looking for some running room. Reverses his direction. Here comes Diego Hunter. He's into the end zone from two yards out. And it's a storm sirens are going. It's a cyclone touchdown. Diego Hunter and Steve, that was athleticism. That was quickness. And that was Hunter having the uh, field generalship out there to say, you know what? I'm going to have to reverse direction here if I'm going to make anything out of this thing. And he did. It was all Diego Hunter, Mark, right there. And we'll go to replay here after the uh, point after. Till Butler, the holder. For Garrett Hutchinson. Hutchinson's had a busy and very productive season. A very important point after. We got movement. We got a whistle. And this would be our first penalty of the night. And if it's half the distance, if it's on Dinwiddie, Mark, I might consider going to two. That way you put you up 10-3, which is a touchdown extra point instead of being if you have an extra point here, you're up nine, you're off six. So it is all sides against Dinwiddie. Right, so it would move it to the one-yard line. They don't, it uh, looks like they're not going to rethink it and reconsider. They go back to the uh, point after. And again, the holder is Till Butler, and the kicker is Garrett Hutchinson. We're never in for a very important point after here. High snap, he gets it down, kick is up, and kick is good. Our score with 10.27 to play in the second quarter is Cyclones 9, Generals 3. And Mark, you know, let's go to that replay here mm -hmm. and find that touchdown. And look what happened right here. This, uh, it was just a little uh, pass play to Diego Hunter. It looked like he was bottled up mm -hmm. on the left side, and then Dinwiddie collapsed down on it. But Diego, with his escapability, was able to escape that and run it back to the right side in for the touchdown. Eastern View is now on top by scoring 9-3. to three. Let me say this, Steve. Uh, Dinwiddie, 
hell, heck of a football team. Yeah. We got a lot of football to play tonight. But they have to know that they have not been in this position trailing in the second quarter right. of the season. Right, and then what he knows, they're in for a game too. I mean, they, they didn't think this was going to be a pushover, and Eastern View's proven that they belong on the field. You know, Garrett Hutchinson will kick off from the 40. The very dangerous return man is Josiah Williams. Watch out for him. Cyclones know all about him. It's a short kick. This one fielded by Clay Trey Reese. And Reese hit hard down at the 25-yard line on a good special teams play made by number 34. That would be Drew Sharina. And Dinwiddie's offense back to task here. They'll start this one from their own 25. It's going to be a big uh, defensive, uh, big defensive uh, stand here by the Cyclones. See if they can force a three and out. Sort of at the ball carrier. Straight ahead he goes, and the not much doing that time as the Cyclone defense, defensive front, doing its job there to limit him to a one-yard game. Second down and nine. Here's Pope. Here comes the pressure. They set up the screen. Oh, nice tackle. The ball is loose. Oh. That tackle made by Cohen King on the receiver there, number four, Josiah Williams. And that was such a critical tackle. He had a little bit of running room in front of him were it not for Cohen King's tackle, Steve. Yeah. It almost, you know, I thought he dropped the football, Mark. Mm -hmm. Looks like they have it now at the 32-yard line. Third and three for the Generals. They're changing the play, market the line of scrimmage. It's a big, big third down here for Eastern View. Well, they obviously recognize they are in for a fight tonight, a huge battle against this Eastern View Cyclone team. It's game to play. And here is Pope going for it here. Looks like he got too close to the 35-yard line. I can't tell if he made it, Mark, yeah. or not. If he it's a little oh. tough picking up the exact, well, they say the hash marks out there, but it looks like he's had, he has it at the 36. So the line of scrimmage uh, original was 25. Had to get to the 35 for a first down. It's just past that, so it is a first down for the Generals. And the clock is running, 8.50 to play here in the second quarter. Our score, Cyclones 9, Generals 3. Generals have it first and 10 now from the 36-yard line. Here's Pope. This is Sturdivant. He's a dangerous running back. He runs into a wall of white jerseys. The initial hit slowed him up in time for the teammates to get there, and they're hard to bring to the ground. Uh, but uh, the Eastern View defense still swarming to that football, Steve. Yep, and that's what you got to do, Mark. I mean, the Eastern View, the defensive game plan uh, led by the defensive quarters. Uh, um, coordinator Steve Franchise and company is uh, Franchise is doing a good job of stopping Dinwiddie right now. They've got a good game plan. Swarm to that football. Find it. Second and nine from the 37. Here's Pope. Pressure now collapses. He gets away from one defender. Here comes another. Gets away from him. This is a huge run. They had him back there. Yeah. Two or three opportunities to bring it down. That was his athleticism and determination. Got across the 45, out to about the 47-yard line. It's another first down for Dinwiddie. That was all Kamon Pope. It was that, Mark. I mean, he got away. Each of you had him trapped deep in the backfield. Mm -hmm. But they've got to wrap him up. They can't just arm tackle him. Here's Sturdivant. Sturdivant looking for him. Hesitation, delay, breaks the tackle, open field. Biggest run tonight, the ball is loose. And let's see who's got it. Looks like uh, Dinwiddie's recovered it on a heads-up play by the uh, wide receiver there, number 88. That would be Jaquan Blackwell. And now they have it in Eastern View territory inside the 20-yard line, right at the 19. That was a pickup of 28 yards. Combining the run and the fumble yardage. Yeah, the fumble is about 10 yards. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 now from the 19. Dinwiddie on the move. Here's Pope. Delayed handoff, Sturdivant. And they wrap him up at the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and six from that spot. Seven minutes, five seconds. Clock ticking here in the second quarter. 9-3 our score in favor of Eastern View. 
Cyclones got the first points of the game with a safety. They led 2-0. Dinwiddie came back with a 20-yard field goal to make it 3-2. And then Eastern View scored a touchdown behind uh, the efforts of Diego Hunter. It's 9-3, but Dinwiddie on the move here. Here's Pope. Pump fake. Now he lofts it. Out there. This one picked uh -huh. off. Picked Diego off. Hunter, the man. The interception and the turnover. Well, for it's a knock against Pope. He had, I think, five interceptions this season, which was three more than Lowry. And what a big one right here. And Diego Hunter stepping up again as a uh, solid contributor and a game maker for the Cyclones, Steve. He did it. And, and, and each of you answered the call, Mark, right there with a big uh, interception by Diego Hunter. And Pope threw into double coverage, and he underthrew the football. And Diego Hunter just stepped right in front of the wide receiver and picked that ball off. And brought it. Now it's a touchback. Now see if Easton View can get their ball control patented offense and see if they can get some clock, control the clock, and run out this first half. All right, here it is. Cyclones up 9-3 to three off the uh, turnover interception. They have it back on offense from the 20. Here's Matt Lowry airing it out. Up top. Got a receiver open. He catches it. It's Zach Thomas being chased from behind. He breaks the tackle <laughs> at the 10, and he's into the end zone. Look for flags. Nope. If you don't see one, that's an 80-yard touchdown reception <laughs> from Lowry to Zach Thomas. And sound the storm sirens batting down the hatches. It's a cyclone touchdown. And it's from Matt Lowry to Zach Thomas, 80 yards. And, uh, and it, we've got to go to replay on this one, Mark. After the point after, let's after take a look at that one. 80 yards. We're right on first down. Lowry uh, decided to go to the air, and he aired it out for Zach Thomas. Perfectly thrown pass, Dave. And yeah. Thomas uh, didn't have the speed the defensive back did, but what he did is he broke the tackle to get in. He broke the tackle, but he got open too. Perfect pass by Matt Lowry. 15-3 our score on for the point after. It's Garrett Hutchinson, the holder, Till Butler. And that combination is successful. 16-3 to three our score with 6.24 to play in this one. Steve, I know you want to take another look at that uh, tremendous pass play for a touchdown from Matt Lowry to Zach Thomas. Let's go to that replay, Mark. And look right here. And look what happened here. First play after the interception. What do you do? You want to strike a dagger. Eastern View did just on a streak play down the sideline. And Matt Lowry had plenty of time and just aired out a beautiful pass to Zach Thomas, who breaks a tackle on the way down into the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern View. Steve, how huge is that to think? I mean, you had two uh, decisive moments. You had Dinwiddie on the move. They had the ball in the Eastern View red zone. They were picked off the interception to uh, foil that uh, threat that might have resulted in seven points. Instead, a seven, another seven-point swing with each of you go back on offense and 80-yard touchdown. I mean, now they're up 16-3, to three and... Uh, you know, a little bit of momentum, no doubt, for Eastern View. they got to feel pretty good about the way things are going. They do, Mark. And, again, it was a big play, and uh, you could hear the crowd just stop. What a, a nice job by Cohen King. Cut down the return man there, number 27, Barry Jordan. Well, this is a position that Dinwiddie has not been in this season. No. They have not been behind, Mark. And uh, now they know they're in the ball game. And now see if Eastern View can carry that momentum on defense here. And they have it at the 31. you got to figure that the uh, Cyclones inspired by what's happened here in the last few minutes. Dinwiddie trailing. 513. 16 to 3. And they have it at the 31 to start this drive. They hand it off to Sturdivant. Sturdivant. This time, nowhere to go. <laughs> They do a nice job at containing him. Well, Sturdivant led the team this year. He had uh, 143 carries for 1,039 yards, uh, 7.3 yards per carry, 115.4 yards average per game with 18 touchdowns. Plus, he's a threat as a receiver. 13 catches, 191 yards. Terrific season for Zion Sturdivant. Well, they still, each of you still got to play tough lights out defense, Mark. Mm, no doubt. They gave him a yard. Call it second and nine. Here comes the pressure. They pick it up with the block out there. They got a receiver, Kayvon Pope. He slung the first defender to the side. He's still slinging people. They stop him after he picks up the first down. He must be awfully strong. He is, Mark. First down for the Generals. We'll check the spot here just a moment. Some of these uh, hash marks 
and lines are hard to pick up here. So they've moved it into Eastern View territory at the Eastern View 48. All right, here's Sturdivant. Hit hard by number 21, Aaron Henson, the initial hit. Slowed him up, and then Diego Hunter and others came over for the tackle. They mark it at the 45. He picked up three. It's second and seven. 5.03, or make it 5.05 and counting here in the second quarter. Second and seven. Dinwiddie, Kayvon Pope on the carry. He's dangerous. They cut him down near the 40. Good tackle made out there by Cameron Spangler. They mark it at the 40. It'll be third and two. Big third down play here, Mark. See if Eastern View can come up with a stop right here. Well, you know, Kayvon Pope, I saw him catch a touchdown pass last year in the finals. He's played more at linebacker this year, but you figured they would want to use him on both sides of the football, and they have. Here it is, third down. This one is bobbled incomplete on the uh, short pass there, and he that would have been a first down because he had a little bit of room in front of him, and that was intended for number nine, Joseph Tyree. Now we have a fourth and two. Mark, that was a good play call because that had first down mm -hmm. yardage. It was a screen pass, perfect play. Right. Now it's fourth and two. Now what? And it looks like uh, Dinwiddie's going to go for it here. See if he can be and get a big stop. Here we go on fourth and two. Here's Pope rolling to his left. Now he looks to get away, and he, they tackle him right at the 35-yard line. That will be a first down. He picked up five. He needed two. Now from the 35-yard line, once more, Dinwiddie on the move. And the last time they were on the move, they turned it over with the interception. They have it first and 10 now from the Eastern View 35-yard line. All right, here's Pope. Swings it out near side to Sturdivant. And Sturdivant carries a defender or two just shy of the 30-yard line. Number 59 is Avery Seitz, and number nine, Paris Owen, combining for the tackle. First time we've called Paris Owen's number all game, Mark. He's mm -hmm. in that linebacker spot. Yep. They held him to a four-yard pickup. It's second and six from the 31. Once again, Pope. The late handoff, Sturdivant. Watch out. Sturdivant, he's in the open field. He's got running room 10, 5, he dies for the pylon, and he's in. No, let's check no. this. No, they're saying he's not in. Saying he's just shy. In. That, did you see Sturdivant's dangerous running ability yeah. there? Well, that's all brought on by that delay handoff, too, mm -hmm. because they look, they shows pass, and then they do that delayed handoff, but Dinwiddie's, you know, like good teams do, are going to answer, and they're just, they're trying to answer right here. First and goal from the one-yard line. Sturdivant, he's in. From one yard out. Touchdown, Dinwiddie. And that'll make it 16 to 9. With 329 to play here in the second quarter. And on for the point after the nearly perfect Todd Anspot. The holder came on Pope. This will bring the generals to within six if he converts. Good snap, good hold, good kick. 16 to 10, our score in favor of the Cyclones. 3.29 to play here in the second quarter. Wow, what a run by Sturdivant, Steve. That 30-yard uh, run from the 31 to the 1. I mean, that was set up by the delayed handoff. And, wow, he broke a tackle, got into the open field, and... He is uh, very dangerous. No wonder he has amassed so many yeah. rushing yards this year. Yeah, I mean, and he got, it was a, that delay handoff, Mark. It shows pass, and then do that delay, and he's going to pick up big runs, and Eastern View didn't defend it very well. Pure and simple. They just didn't defend that very well. Now uh, I'm sure that they're going to make some adjustments on that play on, on, at halftime with the defense, but still Eastern View's on top, 16 to 10. This broadcast is made possible by Battlefield Automotive, the keystone of service, and a cornerstone of our community. Battlefield Automotive, 
at 547-3673. One thing's for certain, Steve, we and our viewing audience are getting exactly what we thought they would get, and that's an entertaining football game. Yep, you're right. Two very fine football teams here tonight. Here's the kick on the ground. Scooped up Justin Fit. Well, now it's picked up, finally. Cameron Spangler has it, breaks a tackle, and he'll be shy of the 30-yard line. That's where they're going to mark it, looks like, at the 27. Eastern View's offense will set up from that spot. Now see if Eastern View can sit there and run out the clock here, three minutes to go here in the first half, and try to uh, knock in another score before halftime, Mark. That would and be huge if they could do that. Really would, and Dinwiddie's going to receive the uh, second half kickoff. That's true. They won the toss and deferred. Eastern View has it now. Back on offense at its 27. Lowry. Diving catch made by Zach Thomas. Got across the 30, out to about the 33. A pick up a six. It's second and four coming up. Zach Thomas, clutch performer for the Cyclones. Here's second down. Here's the running game that hasn't been able to get on track. This one doesn't as well. They hand it off to Trey Holmes. Not much there. It's going to bring him a third down. And about five. Long third and five, Mark. And here, let's see if they can pick up the first down. I think they need it. I don't think they want to turn the punt the ball here to Dinwiddie before the half. All right. They said no game. Third and four now from the 33. They need a first down here to work this clock. And not give the ball back to Dinwiddie, obviously. Third and four. That's Trey Holmes in motion. They look for Holmes out there. This oh. one is picked off. And diving into the end zone touchdown. for a touchdown is number 32, Blake Williams. He read that one all the way, and that's going to get, that's going to make it a tied ball game, 16 all with 2-12 to play here in the second quarter. Mark, let's go to replay right here on this one because that defender for Dinley was sitting on that play the whole time. So Matt Lowry drops back. He drops back to throw the ball, but he's telegraphing his pass the whole way, looking at the receiver, didn't look off the defender, and that defender was just sitting on the ball, and didn't really take it in for a pick six. Sure did. And now they're going going for two here. Our, no, they're not. I'm sorry. On spot on for the point after to give Dinwiddie its second lead of the night. They first led three to two. And this point after makes it 17-16 Dinwiddie with two minutes and 12 seconds to play in the second quarter. And that interception for a touchdown certainly did bring back the partisan crowd to life, didn't it? Sure did, Mark. And you can just see in that play, I mean, Matt is going to have to go back and talk to his coaches. But right there, he just was looking at the receiver the whole way. And he was going for, looked like he was going for Zach Thomas. And uh, right on the play, and that defender, and they, they saw something on film that uh, each of you likes to run, and he just sat there. He didn't even move with the, with the wide receiver. He just sat in that zone, and Matt threw it right to him. I mean, just threw it right to him. So the Cyclones here would benefit very well from a nice return off this kickoff. Typically... Anspach has kept it away from the deep threats. Notably, Diego Hunter. It's a very entertaining first half of football. You know the second half's going to be explosive. Yep. This kick, keep it on the ground. This one fielded near the 20-yard line. Out to the 30 was the return man, Noah Proctor. And so what, now what each of you has got to shake off that turnover mark. They just got to shake it off and see they got plenty of time. Two minutes, six seconds here to go in the first half. Mm -hmm. See if they can put another scoring drive here and go into halftime with the lead because they had all the momentum when they hit that long 80-yard touchdown pass to Zach Thomas. Looked like each of you was well on their way, but then they gave up two, uh, two quick touchdowns. Right. It's uncharacteristic on the Eastern View defense. Sure is. Here's Trey Holmes. 
looking for running room, and it's just not there. Making the nice solo tackle, Joseph Tyree. And he lost a yard, did home. Second down and 11. And Tyree's another Division I prospect at school we're looking at, too. Big and, kid. And, and Steve, if you're doing what he do, you start thinking about your timeout? Um, yeah, the, on, after this play. If they don't get big yards here on this second down, then we'll start using timeouts so they can sit there and try to get the ball All back. Right, here's Lowry stepping up. Here comes the pressure. He'll have to go down, and he'll lose another yard on the play. And now we're going to have a third down and 12 coming up. And now Dinwiddie calls timeout, Mark. I will tell you this broadcast is made possible by CFC Farm and Home Center. Hometown service since 1932. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center at 825-2200. Timeout on the field. We'll do likewise. Back right after this. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield Toyota, Chevrolet and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. After the timeout, Cyclone Savage, third and 13 from the 27 yard line. Here's Matt Lowry, another throwing situation. Here comes the pressure. He steps up, throws long. Got a receiver out there. He can't oh. catch him. Couldn't quite catch up with him. A little overthrown. Zach Thomas was open, Steve. With the pass overthrown and a diving effort. Could not bring it to fruition. Hey Mark, that pass is there. I mean, the, def the defensive secondary for Dinwiddie is suspect. And I think each of you recognize that. But Matt's got to be a little bit more accurate. He kind of rushed that throw right there, Mark. And he overthrew Zach Thomas, and uh, he couldn't make the catch. It would have been a first down and a movement of the sticks. Instead, it's fourth and 13. It's Diego Hunter running and kicking. This one picked up. And a good tackle made, but he's Jimity, rather. Robert Barlow, the return man. Dinwiddie will have excellent field position at its own 47-yard line. And that was unusual to have Diego Hunter punt the ball. Usually not the punter, but I guess they wanted to uh, make Dinwiddie guess is he going to run it or mm -hmm. punt it. So Dinwiddie back on the offense with a minute 12 to play. They lead by a point, 17-16. Excellent field position here. Do they have enough time to punch it back into the end zone? A whale of a football game we have. 17 yeah. 16 our score. All right, here's Pope. Stepping up. Here's the pressure. Got away from it. Dumps it off. Got his receiver. Play Trey Reese. And a first down. And it's going to be a flag, too, Mark, for horse collar tackle. And they just threw it. And uh, 
Coach Hatfield isn't happy about it, but that's going to be tacking on another 15 yards. Here comes the call. And it's going to be a horse car, personal foul. No, oh, they, they waved, waved it off. They waved it off. And that was important for the Cyclones. Yeah. That would have hurt them. Yeah. All right, they have the ball at the 33 now on that pass reception of 14 yards for a first down. Right now, Dinwiddie's got Eastern View's defense knocked on back on their heels. Mark, they're not attacking like they usually do. All right, here it is. First and 10, Generals at the Cyclones 33. Here's Pope. Throwing to, to Kayvon Pope, 20, 15. They're really bringing to the ground. He just sort of slings the defenders off of him. Right. Picked up uh, 18 yards in the first down. They have it marked now at the Eastern View 15. Make that the 14. 19 yard pickup. First and 10 now from the 14. 53.9 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. Pope all the time back there, incomplete. Threw it behind the intended receiver, Josiah Williams. It'll be second and 10 from the 14 with 50.2 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. And Mark, this would be a bit, you know, a bitter pill for Eastern View if they give up a score here, Mark. They're already in the uh, field goal range with uh, Dinwiddie's field goal kicker. Yeah. They, they got limited to a field goal try. They cannot let a Dinwiddie go ahead and with a touchdown. Okay, here's Pope. Stepping up, throwing, got a receiver. Caught, hit hard. Inside the 10 yard line. Uh, Jaquan Blackwell. Now it's at the nine. Third down there. And he spikes it to kill the clock. And that makes it fourth down. I don't mm -hmm. know why you want to spike it there at third down. Because now it makes it fourth down instead of. Is that a Dinwiddie had a timeout? They had two timeouts. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Why didn't they call timeout? Because when you spike it, you get up the down. Now it's fourth, like right. you say. And that's now you've got to make a third. decision. you got to either go for the touchdown. Or uh, you can get a few, you can get a first down without the touchdown, or you go on with a field goal. Mm-hmm. It looks like they're going to go for it here. And now uh, Dinwiddie does call a timeout. Yeah, they've got to think about it because that was not uh, what they wanted to do. Yeah, that could be big uh, because with the timeout, they're going to have it fourth down and six. Yeah. Yeah, he spiked it. That, that, yeah, he you get up the it. down when you spike it. Yeah. So, uh, then we just call the timeout. Let's yeah. take a quick break. Give our cameraman a chance. Well, now to they change it. Say it's third down mark. Yeah. And the second down there, there was the down marker was wrong. So, that's why he spiked it. All right. Well, let's see. 14, 1, 2. We're coming back. Is it second? Or they're saying it's third down. It's third down. Hmm. All right. All right. Third down here from the nine-yard line. They need six for a first down. All right. Here's Pope. Watch out. Got away. Here's Pope. Running his way into the end zone from nine yards out. Everyone's talked about how good he is. He's showing us why here tonight. Yeah. And he that'll did. make it 23 to 16 in favor of Dinwiddie with 25 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Well, Mark, that was really easy. Just missed tackles on behalf of Eastern View. And like I said, Eastern View defense is not used to being pushed around like this. And uh, that's exactly what happened right there. And it was just too easy. Pope walked right on in. You know, he made people miss and he made it look easy. Yep. And he made it look like he just, this is just what he does. And the kick is up. And Onspach's kick is good. 24 to 16, our score with 25 seconds to play here in the second quarter. We've had a change in momentum. Steve Easterview had it in uh, their way, and they were looking pretty good until what, as you remember, it happened? Well, I mean, after that touchdown, is, you know, uh, score and then all of a sudden I think Eastern View kind of relaxed and allowed uh, Dinwiddie to come down and score that you know touchdown to make it 16 to 10 mm -hmm. but then that interception I think that interception just really killed him yeah and it was a poor play poor pass by Matt Lowry he just he just telegraphed the pass the whole way 
24 to 16 our score in favor of Dinwiddie. And uh, 25 seconds to play here in the first half. And more bad news is Dinwiddie will get the third quarter kickoff with momentum. Here's Ansbach's kick, keeping it on the ground. Here's a, they flick it back to Diego Hunter, trying to get something going. Not much doing there, he got across the 25, that was it. So if you're Eastern View now with 17 seconds left, Steve. What do you do, Mark? I don't know, you know, I would, you don't want to get cute back here and you make a turnover and force a turnover. Next thing you know, he's, uh, Dinwiddie's got the ball again right before half. So what I'm thinking here is, you know, take care of the football. Let's go into halftime. We're only down eight points. We're only down a touchdown and two-point conversion. See if they can get back in halftime, get back in this game. But they've got to figure out defensively how to stop Dinwiddie, mm -hmm. especially that the Pope brothers. Delayed handoff to Trey Holmes. And it looks like the ball is loose, but Holmes gets it back. And that could have been a, really a death knell mm -hmm. right there for Eastern View. No gain on the play. Second and 10, and the final seconds are ticking off. So the first half goes into the books, and the two teams go to the locker room for their the intermission and their instructions. Our score at halftime, Dinwiddie 24. Eastern View 16. We'll come back for the start of the third with Chris Capella mic'd up. Stay tuned. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image. 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield, Toyota, Chevrolet, and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. Welcome back to our broadcast. It's halftime here at Dinwiddie High School. With the Generals leading the Cyclones 24 to 16, joined now by Chris Capella. Chris, how did you see the first half? Boy, Mark, what an entertaining. This game's really living up to the billing. I know it might not be going Eastern View's way right now, but uh, this has just been incredibly entertaining. Obviously, that interception thrown by Matt Lowry, I hate to harp on one thing because he's he's uh, thrown 16 passes. That was his worst one, and the other 15 have been pretty good, but yeah. that was a game changer. That was great play recognition by Dinwiddie, and Eastern View's defense uh, looked a little gassed. At times, I, I thought, just by the pace that this that this Dinwiddie team plays at. Um, but overall, you know, well-played half by both sides. Culpep or Eastern View, excuse me. I mean, if you really think about it, they forced two fumbles on one drive, didn't recover either of them. That's how, that's how close this game yeah. That's how close this game is right now. It's going to come down to a couple more big plays. I don't think it's over by any stretch of the imagination. Well, one, a couple of things that stood out for me. Eastern View's defense... Uh, for the most part, did get to the football well like they've done all season. 
but they found that the Dinwiddie athletes are much harder to bring to their feet, to the ground, mm -hmm. than other teams' athletes. And then uh, also, when Eastern View's uh, on offense, the, the, you know, the vaunted rushing game behind Trey Holmes, uh, where he was getting, you know, five, five, six yards carry this season, it has not been there. I think he had for 11 carries, 18 yards. Yeah. Those are not Trey Holmes' numbers, but they're playing a, a defense with athletes uh, and speed players that they really haven't seen this year. I think if this score kind of remains the way it is and this situation continues to play out, that's going to be the most disappointing aspect for Eastern View because this is obviously a really, really good Dimwitty football team, a great front seven, but they're still not as big as some of these other teams that Eastern View has played. What they are is they're, they're very fast, and this Dimwitty defensive line is doing a good job of just taking up one to two gaps and letting these great linebackers they have fly to the football. So that's going to have to be an adjustment, and no Jalen Vini tonight for the Cyclone. So it, it's Trey Holmes. Maybe we get a little more Diego Hunter on some jet sweeps here in the second half, but... What you what you see is what you're getting right now. I mean, these are the guys who are gonna have to who are gonna have to make some plays running the football. Well, so what do you do as far as adjustments to uh, Dinwiddie's quarterback came on Pope? He stands back there, very very poised in the pocket. He's had a, some uh, delayed handoffs to uh, Zion Sturdivant, who's right. done some damage, or he just uh, decides to run the ball, and it looks like they have a good chance to bring him down but he's just hard to wrap up and take to the turf so what sort of adjustments do you think the Eastern View defense will make as we start this uh, third quarter because uh, Dinwiddie gets the, the uh, third quarter kickoff right well I don't know if there's so many so much adjustments you can make when it comes to running the football I mean like you said they, they've had their opportunities to bring Pope down in the backfield or for a short gain and he's just ripped off maybe 10 yards or even on the draw they had a couple chances a, n a nine yard touchdown run there so that's really just going to come down to they're going to have to just tackle a little better. Overall, they've, they haven't been terrible against the run, so the stats might say otherwise. But what's killing the Cyclones right now are just these big plays. You know, they contain a guy like Sturdivant for four yards, right, for three right. yards, and then he busts out a 30-yard run. Exactly. That that right there, that's, that's going to be difficult to stop. It's going to have to come down to tackling better, and they're going to have to get off the field here pretty quickly because you can see with the pace that Dinwiddie plays at, that they're wearing down Eastern View's big defensive line. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Hatfield and uh, his staff uh, told the players at the intermission and what sort of adjustments they'll make because, uh, you know, the coaches obviously are, uh, they, they recognize what the, uh, where the problems have been, that sort of thing. So it will be interesting. And I think if you're with I mean, they've, they've got some momentum. They're going to be receiving the second half kickoff. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, we knew it was going to be a close football game. Um, you just can't take on the number one team in the state and expect it to go your way necessarily. But as you pointed out, a lot of football to play. Eastern View has a legitimate chance to come back and win this game. They've had the lead a couple times here tonight. But like you say, the, the, the interception for a touchdown, giving up the long run tournament hurt them as well. Uh, just a few things to shore up that they uh, it might make the difference in this football game. Well, we've been waiting for Eastern View to get punched in the mouth all season it hasn't happened this is the first time they've been trailing all year that yeah. um they gave up 21 points in 6 17 of this of the second quarter which is just why i mean they were up 16 to 3 and three right. three quick touchdowns like that um so now it's going to see what we're going to see what these guys what these guys are made of and i'm sure there are going to be some adjustments i think dimwitty's doing a really good job with their overall route concepts through the through the passing game as well they're seeing a lot of levels guys just sitting low in the soft zone and Pope's extending these plays, and they're getting some some yards after reception here as well. So they're going to definitely be some adjustments. Maybe we see a little more pressure uh, from the Eastern View defense, but really it's going to come down to how are these guys going to respond, and it's going to start right away on this first drive because if Dimway goes down for a score and they go up two scores in this game, those doubts might start creeping in for the Cyclones. Let me ask you this about Zach Thomas. He had that beautiful 80-yard reception mm -hmm. for a touchdown from – Matt Lowry got in the open field, broke a tackle to get into the end zone. They've tried to go to him a couple of the times. It appears to me that Thomas has worked his way open, but the uh, quarterback, Matt Lowry, unable to get the ball to him where he, you know, uh, on target. Uh, that could be a difference as well. 
Do you think they go back to Zach Thomas quite a bit here in the second half? Uh, certainly. Thomas has been open for most of this game. He's doing an outstanding job. And I think Lowry, with the exception of, of that one bad interception, you call it a bad interception where the linebacker just reads that yeah. wheel route, even there, if he puts just a little more air on the ball, it might get to, to Trey Holmes on that one. But I thought I think he's looked pretty sharp for the most part. It's easy to pick out what he might have missed. We right. all saw that overthrow on the third down in that last drive. But for the most part, for a kid who's not been asked to throw the ball as many times as he has, he has 16 pass attempts in the first half. He hasn't had that in games right. sometimes. So I think he's... And he's obviously, obviously necessitated by the fact that the running game has Right, been right. There, so, so maybe we see a little more Diego Hunter running the football on some of these jet sweeps in the second half. I think we're going to get some of that. Chris, good call. And uh, thanks for your analysis as always. And uh, we'll look forward to reading your story tomorrow or uh, in the Star Exponent. I'll always like your, uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, but we can read it online. You don't forget the Internet online thing, Steve. <laughs> I'm all about that, you know. <laughs> I like it both ways. Well, thank you for the time, Mark O'Connell. Hopefully well, this is not our last broadcast of the year. And have a great second half, guys. Thank you very much. And Steve Peacock rejoins the broadcast team. And Steve, you heard Chris's analysis and get you to weigh in on whatever else uh, might need to be said when we start this second half. And obviously Dinwiddie with the momentum, and they've got the uh, eight-point lead. They're going to get the ball back here to start the third quarter. And the uh, return man slips, gets back to his feet, and he looks like he gets across the 20-yard line. Well, I think Mark right 30 here. 30-yard line, my mistake. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I think right here, the Eastern View's got to see. They've got to come out and force a three and out. I think really they've got to send a statement here, see if they can get their offense back on the field and get you know get this ball game back tied up. But they cannot let uh, Dinwiddie come down here and score, or either give a big play or, or a long, sustained drive. So, Kamon Pope, the quarterback, did some damage there in that first half. He starts them here, and Sturdivant, the ball carrier, and the Cyclones smother him before he can get started, hold him for no gain. But this is what something that Chris Capella was talking about, that the Cyclones do a good job of stopping Sturdivant two or three times, but then he'll bust loose for a 30-yard gain like he did in that uh, second quarter. They're aware of that. that are, gotta wrap him up, obviously. We gotta wrap him up, and they gotta play four quarters of football, Mark. They, they gotta, you know, four downs, too. They cannot just give up the big play. On the end around, Josiah Williams. And they hold him for a pickup of about three yards. He gets to the 34. It'll be third and seven from that spot. Well, we had a very entertaining first half. Third down and six for the 36. Third down. I was saying seven. They're saying it's more like six from the 34-yard line. They fake it to Kayvon Pope. Then, then uh, Kayvon Pope keeps it, and the Cyclones stay home. They wrap him up after he picked up a short gain. Garrett Robinson in on the tackle. And now we've got a fourth down situation, and the punting team come on, coming on for Dinwiddie. That means Eastern View's defense did his job on this first possession. And that's what they got to do, Mark, and here's uh, Diego Hunter time. Big play. He's going back in the punt formation. I don't think they're going to punt to him, but if he can get there close, watch out. They line up to punt this in the way. The lone uh, safety back there is Diego Hunter. This is Pope kicking it away. This one's going to take a general bounce, generally speaking. Play on words <laughs> there. Bounces yeah. inside the no Cyclone 30-yard line. <laughs> yeah, actually, I admit it was intended that <laughs> time. So, Eastern View, Steve, the defense did its job. Other offensive teammates come onto the field here in the third quarter, and they'll start this one from their own 27. Yeah, it's going to be, like I said, I think this is a very key series for Eastern View, Mark. And let me explain why. You're down 24 to 16, 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. But you got to, you, you're knocked back in the heels in the second half, late second quarter by Dinwiddie. You got to come back and answer. We're going to try to go to home to establish the run. And it's not going to happen. And the ball is loose. And it's fielded by Kayvon Pope at the 15 yard line. They wanted to establish the run. Trey Holmes coughed it up. Kayvon Pope. The premier linebacker 
Finally pounces on it for the Generals, and they're going to have it at the Eastern View 21-yard line. And Mark, I said whoever had the, you know, with the uh, turnovers, the team with the least turnovers is going to win the game. Right now, Eastern View's got two, interception and a fumble, and uh, the only turnover is the bad snap that Dinwiddie's had that resulted in the safety for Eastern View, but not what Eastern View was looking for to start the second half. So Dinwiddie has it now on Eastern View's 21-yard line. And this is the ball carrier, Joseph Tyree. Maybe a yard, that's it. Diego Hunter and others in on the tackle. And I didn't see that fumble until the end. It must have been right at, right when, and see, Trey doesn't like to go down after the first hit, and he was scratching for yards, and Pope just came right around there and popped it right out of there. All right, a little play act here. Sturdivant, delayed handoff. Sturdivant breaking tackles, hard to bring down. He got inside the 10 yard line in the first down and goal for Dinwiddie. And see, Sturdivant's being recruited by Army, Mark. So Army's really looking at him. Picked up 12 yards. First and goal now for the Generals from the Cyclone 8. They fake it, Pope keeps it, bounces out of there. Breaking tackles and into the end zone from eight yards out. Wow. Eight yard run by Kamon Pope. It always looks like they have him and that they're gonna wrap him up and bring him down. Somehow, he wiggles his way free and he stays on his feet and he gets into the end zone. Yeah. And Mark, that was just too easy right there. Kamon Pope just was, I mean, you cannot arm tackle him and that's exactly what happened with Easton View and he just took it on the end zone. And the thing is, Steve, he runs upright. Yeah, I mean, it's just that they just uh, didn't tackle, poor tackle. Oh, this one is no good. I think they got a piece of that ball. Then it hit the upright, so the PAT is no good. It's 30 to 16, two touchdown game. And it was set up by the Eastern View turnover on the fumble, which was recovered at the Eastern View 21 yard line. And two plays later, Kamon Pope ran it in from eight yards out. But I was talking about him running upright where you would think, as a former player, wouldn't you, that you could actually stick him in the numbers with your yeah, I mean, typically you're, with right, your face you mask? Could, you're right, you could right here. You could hit him in the chest. And uh, But what they did, they're trying to arm tackle him. They're not, and he does run straight up, or he doesn't run with a low center of gravity. So it would be that you think it'd be easy to bring down, but it's just a tribute to his strength. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Todd Anspach will tee it up. His teammates, a 14-point lead, 30-16. to 16. Down by two scores now. Eastern View will be in a position where there will be really no more room for mistakes. No, well, you got to see, now we're going to see what Eastern View is made of, Mark, because they gave up, uh, you know, turnovers uh, have killed Eastern View. They ladder up to Diego Hunter. Here's Hunter up the middle. Got across the 35 and across the 40 to about the 41. Very good field position for Eastern View's offense as they come back down to the field trailing by a two touchdown. And Eastern View's gonna have to go to the air mark. I don't think their running game is, is on track tonight. It's not working. Dinwiddie came, you gotta give Dinwiddie credit. They came in with a good game plan to stop Eastern View's rushing attack and they've done a good job of that tonight. Yeah, it just has not been there. Uh, Chris Capella had uh, Trey Holmes with 11 carries for 18 yards in that first half. Here's Diego Hunter. Sp he spun away from the first defender, tries to spin away from the second, but there's just too many blue jerseys there in pursuit. So many players in the tackle, including number 56, Deontay Johnson, and yeah. number 49, Omar Tyson, who's had a, a few tackles here tonight. And the other thing, too, is that's bothering Eastern View, Mark, is the Dinwiddie's quickness. They have not come up a team, you know, and this is what I said, you know, the only knock on Eastern View, they didn't have really played anybody all during the regular season, and they have not played a team the caliber of Dinwiddie, and now it's showing. Yeah, now they lost five yards in the play. It's second down and 15. Lowry steps up, got a receiver. It's caught by Leak. He broke a tackle. Oh, the ball is loose, and it's still loose. It looks like uh, Cohen, let's see who this is. It looks like a lineman for each of you may have pounced on it, Steve. Yep, it did, Mark. It's Eastern View ball. Wow, let's pick him up right here. Here he is, number 75, 
for Eastern View, that is Kyle Smith. You talk about a Johnny on the spot right there. That would have been a huge turnover, and Smith allowed them to dodge that bullet. And Mark, again, that's what, you know, this is uncharacteristic. Eastern View's putting the ball on the ground. They're trying to get extra yardage after the play, and uh, right there, Leak was stopped. He just needs to go down. I know you're trying to shed the tackle, but then when he's so quick, the pursuit is coming, and that, that's when the ball gets knocked out because they're trying to get, gain extra yardage, but when they're being tackled and they're not wrapping up and securing that football. They have it at the Dinwiddie 44. Nick Lowry looking for a receiver. Throws it incomplete. That's much better than taking a sack. Yeah, but he felt the pressure. It's coming, Mark. Mm -hmm. But, again, the, the thing is that uh, – Lowry's got to recognize, I mean, these uh, Lowry and the rest of the receiving core of Eastern View, once you're tackled and everything, look, you're down 30 to 16. Yeah, it's great to get the one that extra two yards trying to break a tackle, but you got to understand the pursuit of Dinwiddie is coming, and you better secure that football. All right, second and 10 Cyclone from the General 45. Lowry had Thomas out there, unable to. No, he did. did he he, he caught, did catch he it. it. He I thought it. he dropped it. Great job. So say, no, they did say it's incomplete. Yeah, yeah, it's right down. Keep right rare down. drop pass by Zach Thomas. Now we have a third and ten for the Cyclones from the Generals 45. Rare drop. Let's see what the Cyclones can do here on third and ten. Low snap. Lowry directs the offense. Throws it over for Diego Hunter. He had him. He couldn't hold on to it. The ball tossed a little bit high. And now the Cyclone punt team will have to come on and kick this one back to Genwitty. And you again, Mark, another wasted opportunity by Eastern View. Not being able to get points on the board. Turnovers are, are killing them. And that's exactly in playoff football. Two things that kill you that, you know, you cause you lose football games. Turnovers and poor defense. And right now, Eastern View is uh, experiencing that. Zach Thomas on the punt this one away, standing there his 40 yard line. This one fielded near the 15. And the tackle made on the return man, Josiah Wait, Williams, after he crossed the 20 near the 25. Well, our score is Dinwiddie 30, Eastern G 16, and the general's offense coming back onto the field looking for more. It's going to be, you know, and I don't expect now Dinwiddie's not going to put the ball in the air too much, Mark. They're going to use uh, Pope as a running attack and uh, Sturdivant and try to chew up clock here and get this ball into the fourth, get this game into the fourth quarter. Seven minutes and 12 seconds to play here in the third. 30 to 16 in favor of Dinwiddie. Here's Pope. And you never know if he's going to go down or not. He's like a scrum. He just does not go down. But the whistle blew. <laughs> they can sort of st <laughs> they can stop some momentum, but it's like they never can really get the guy to the turf. He's just, right. And and his brother Kayvon is the same way. You just got to wrap him up, Mark. That's how you bring him to the turf. You wrap him up. You don't try to sit there and hold him up. You got to wrap him up and put your you know and drive him down. And that's what Eastern View is right now. They're lucky right there. The officials blew the whistle, or he would have broke it. Yeah, picked up six, second and four. Reversing the direction as the running back here. They sling him down. That was Josiah Williams, ordinarily a receiver. They handed the ball off to him. Avery Sites made the tackle, but it was enough for a Dinwiddie first down. And what's really bothering Eastern View, Mark, is the quickness. That's what's bothering Eastern View right now is the quickness of Dinwiddie. They just not have been matched up in the regular season against a team of this caliber, and it's really starting to show. And I hate to sound like a broken record about it, but that's what's going on. And Eastern View has not been in this type of situation all year, and now they they got to learn how see if they can come from behind, but they've got to get a stop. Okay, here's Pope. Plenty of time. Nope. Now he throws it, and he throws it away. Pass is from Pope. And the nearest receiver there was number 81, his brother, Kayvon Pope. And that was a coverage sack, Mark. That was pretty mm -hmm. much right there because uh, each of you had good coverage on that play and was able to blanket the uh, wide receivers at Dinwiddie. 
Second and ten now. Generals from their 36-yard line. Clock stop. The incomplete pass. 6-14 to play here in the third quarter. Our score, Dinwiddie 30, Eastern U 16. Second and ten. Kmon Pope, the quarterback. This is Sturdivant, the ball carrier. Can they get him to the turf? Yes, they can. Shy of the 40-yard line. It's going to bring up third down. And about six. I just heard the score. EC Glass, who are they playing that they're losing? Uh, Blacksburg? Blacksburg. Looks like it's going to be third and eight, third and seven. Third and seven, we'll call it, from the 38-yard line. Big third down, don't you think? Yep, big third down right here. That's Kayvon Pope. They fake it to him. They set up the screen. Sturdivant catches it. They tackled right outside the 40-yard line by Noah Proctor. Well, he bobbled it, Mark. I thought he dropped it. But yeah. He, but they're going to say he caught it. It's going to pick it, bring up fourth and about four. Long four. So the Eastern View defense once again does its job. They force a punt here on fourth and four. Diego Hunter will go back hoping to return this one for the Cyclones. And basically Eastern View just needs a touchdown to back in this game, Mark. They, just need, they just need one touchdown to get back in it. Obviously plenty of time. we got a whistle. We haven't had many of those stoppages tonight. Very few penalties in this ball game, Steve. Yeah, it's offside. It's illegal procedure against uh, Dinwiddie because if that had been against Eastern View, it would have been a first down. Sure would. So big. Uh, Make it like fourth and nine here. Yep, fourth and nine. Move it back to the 34-yard line. Diego Hunter standing at the 35 of Eastern View. Here's the punt. It's a high kick. Diego Hunter, fair catch. Caught at the 30-yard line. That's where the Cyclones will set up on offense, traveling by two touchdowns, 30-16. to 16. This broadcast made possible by Virginia Community Bank, your bank of tomorrow and every day after. Virginia Community Bank, banking for life at 829-30. Uh, make that 60-34. Plenty of time, Steve, in this ball yeah, game. Absolutely. Well, I think that if you're Eastern View, if you're able to come back from a 14-point deficit here tonight and win this one, it's going to be said they really showed their medal, wouldn't it? Yep, and they can do it, Mark. It's high school football. They can come back and they can score points quickly. But they've got to believe in themselves and they got to believe that they can do it right now. And they just got to make a big play and they got to secure the football. They just cannot give up turnovers. From the 30-yard line. Matt Lowry airing it out. Looking for Diego Hunter. Incomplete pass. Yeah, and, and we got a penalty flag uh, in. Yeah, it's going to be interference. It was uh, there. They were blanketing Diego and they were just they weren't coming back and playing the football. So that's going to be pass interference 15 yards. But it's from the line of scrimmage. It's from the line the of scrimmage yeah. from the spot. So here comes the call from the referee. Or it could be a hold, but let's see what the here it comes. Defense. It could be defensive holding interference. I think it's going to be interference. There it is. Pass interference. It's been witty. So they mark it off from the line of scrimmage, which was the 30. So it'll come out and go out to the Dinwiddie 45. All right, so it'll be first and 10 Cyclones from their own 45-yard line. 4.42 to play here in the third. Cyclones trail by 14, 30 to 16. First and 10 now from the 45. They go back to the run. They fake it to Holmes. Lowry keeps it, makes a man miss. In the open field, breaks a tackle. Here's Lowry down to the 30-yard line. And really, it, one of the biggest runs of the night. Yeah. Probably beat the biggest run of the night from the rushing game for the Cyclones that was made by the quarterback. Uh, let me tell you why that's important, Mark, because they're always keying on Diego Hunter or, or Trey Holmes. Mm -hmm. Big run there by Matt Lowry. First and 10 now from the 31-yard line. Trey Holmes, they fake it to him again. Lowry keeps it, and they stop him near the line of scrimmage. I think Dinwiddie decided he weren't going to fool him twice on that play. And see, the other thing is, too, that hurts. He should be the same last year against Lafayette when he ran up against Lafayette. 
you know, Eastern View is because of the luck of their power points and the strength of schedule. They've had to, you know, they had to go on the road. I mean, it, to come here Friday night, you had to go to school this morning, and it's a two-and-a-half-hour bus ride. And that's what takes a toll on the team to ride and come in and play a, a big ball game against a tough opponent. Hey, Lowry throw. He's got a receiver out there. Zach Thomas makes one man miss. Stiff arms another one. They wrap him up inside the 10-yard line. They go to Zach Thomas. He delivers. And it's going to be first and goal now for the Cyclones inside that 10-yard line. And Mark, like I said, they've got to score here and then make a statement, get two, and then they're down just one possession. Check the spot, Johnny. There we go. Turn back to the seven. Trey Holmes. They figured to hit him. Here's Matt Lowry. Five. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown from seven yards out. From seven yards out. Sound the storm sirens. Bat down the hatches from seven yards. Matt Lowry. Cyclone. Touchdown. Steve, you go for two here? No, go for one because you're only down 14, Mark. Yeah. So you go for one here. You, that makes you a touchdown, extra point away. So you're back in the ball game, and it kind of takes a little bit. Maybe each of you can seize the momentum right here. Well, Steve, this drive spearheaded on the runs by Matt Lowry. I'm waiting for your response. Yep. I say point after is good. I said this drive spearheaded yeah. by the runs by the quarterback rather than the running back because the running back, there just hasn't been any room for Trey Holmes tonight. No, there hasn't because they've been keying on. Pope has been keying on Holmes, and they've also been keying on Diego Hunter. And what they have did is they had to use, they had to draw up and go to a different game plan, use Matt Lowry into some running, you know, from the quarterback as a run, you know, as a running back from the quarterback position and going to the air. Zach Thomas has come up big. Yeah. He really did. In fact, it looked like, uh, I mean, he just, he's been so sure-handed and so clutch for the Cyclones as a receiver. And one of the things we talked about that Zach Thomas has done for the team this year is his downfield blocking as well. But Matt Lowry uh, engineered that drive and uh, took off with two really good runs and one for a touchdown that uh, brings the Cyclones back, Steve. And that's, that was huge. Well, now they've got to have a defensive stop, Mark, and that's what they got to do. They've got to really put their hands, they've got to tell their defense it's now in the ball game is in your hands. Here's a short kick fielded by Clay Trey Reese. And the gang tackle him near the 35 yard line. There's a flag and they're coming in late. It either could be a hold against Dinwiddie or it could be a face mask against uh, Eastern View. See what the call is. Usually on your special teams play like that, you'll get a bad block. Yep, but I'm blocking the back. See what the officials say. And the Cyclones can hold them here on this uh, possession. They can swing the momentum back in favor of the Cyclones. Only down yeah. by a score here. Yeah, block below the leg. Yeah. We go chop block. I mean, this is uh, sort of the uh, chop block. This is sort of the predicted thing you get on a special teams play is that uh, how many times we see penalty flags on punt and kickoff returns? For the block. Yeah, you yeah. Know. So this is going to knock them back way back deep in the hole. And now let's see if uh, each of you can get a turnover here against Dinwiddie. Mark it back to the 15-yard line. Mm -hmm. It goes from the spot. From where the, where the uh, infraction occurred. Well, really, here's an opportunity, Steve, for that Eastern View defense. Big opportunity, Mark. They just can't. They just got to watch where Pope is and keep an eye on Kayvon Pope. Yeah, Kayvon Pope. Watch out for him, number 81. Here is Kayvon Pope. Now he throws. He's looking for Kayvon. This one, I believe, was incomplete. Hit the ground before yep. it got to his hands. He tried to sell it, though, as though he caught it. Yep. And you got to give him credit for the acting job. He's right? wearing that Buckeye T-shirt underneath his uh, Dinwiddie. Uh, see right there, Buckeyes? <laughs> he sure is. He's the Ohio State, State University. wonder how he feels about Michigan. <laughs> Probably not very good. Second down and, and 10 from the 15. It's just a shame, though, Virginia player going not going to Tech or UVA, going to Ohio State. But I understand. Time out taken by the Generals. And we'll say this broadcast is made possible by Able Heating and Air. You know, there's peace of mind knowing they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air at 718-7556. See, with the time out on the field, let's talk about our other team in action tonight. Culpeper County at the 3A level. We got a good uh, halftime report. They were doing quite well against Thomas Jefferson. Lead what, 24 to six at half right. against uh, TJ. And if Culpepper can win out, they'll be in the regional finals next Saturday. 
with either against uh, with the winner of the James and Mary Warren County. And, you know, that's good for Culpepper because Culpepper has already beaten Warren County, and I know that they can beat James Monroe. I mean, they're, they're, James Monroe is a little bit down this year, and Culpepper's got the run attack in the, in the deep the offensive line to challenge James Monroe. So we could uh, hopefully, if it plays out, we could either go into Front Royal or Fredericksburg next weekend. We'll see. Second down and 10 now from the 15. Pope showing him wants to hand it off, and he thinks he's going to run the ball. No he, they may there. not get him to the ground. Well, they do this time, but he wasn't going anywhere. anywhere. Too many white jerseys there, including number 17, Zach Brown in the tackle for the Cyclones. Here's a big third down now. So the Cyclones here in a good position if they can stop them here deep in their own territory. Well, that, that was a busted play, Mark, because uh, Pope didn't have anyone to hand it off. He was looking for a running back. No one was there, so he had to eat it. But. Big third down play here for the Cyclones. They just yeah, can't he, give up first down. Right he here. lost two. It's third and 12. Pope rolls to his left. Now he throws. This one incomplete. Diego Hunter defending on the intended target, Josiah Williams. And now a fourth down. And all of a sudden, if you look across the field, you look at the fans and more important, the Cyclone players, you're starting to get a sense, Steve, aren't yep. you, that they're starting to get that sense of inspiration back. Yep, and Mark, and I would hear, uh, to me, I would go for the pump block here. I wouldn't really want to say, you know, I know you're going to get good field position, but you don't want to rough the punter. I get well, that's that. Well, my, that's my sticking point on that uh, because they're going to have to punt this one deep in their own territory. You assume you'll get good field position, and you have an opportunity to try to get the ball into the hands of Diego Hunter. True, but, I mean, if you can get that block. It's a philosophical difference. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get that block, you're right. Diego Hunter. Watch this one bounce. He does a nice job of fielding it near the midfield. He made one player miss. We got a penalty flag coming in near the 40-yard line. And I think we might have a face mask against uh, Dinwiddie. You know, you well, may be right because I didn't see really any blockers. Well, there weren't out any there. blockers there, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It can't be a legal block in the back. We'll see what the. <laughs> well, you need a blocker <laughs> to make it illegal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe unless they saw something we didn't unless see. Unless they saw a chop block, we'll see. And uh, we'll see what the call is. And they're saying hold against. Yeah, here it comes. Uh, well, it is against, block. yeah. Block in the back against <laughs> Eastern View. Yeah, and I didn't see that. It had to be way away from the ball. So. Well, they're still going to have outstanding field position. They mark it at the 46-yard line. Eastern View has it on its own 46. Trailing by seven points, 30 to 23, with 226 to play in the third. Matt Lowry looked excellent on that last drive. Let's see what he has in store now. Dropping back to pass. Going to air it out over the middle, incomplete. Diego Hunter, the intended receiver, and he was well covered. Double defenders out there, including Josiah Williams, second and 10. See, I think, you know, they're, they're, key, they're going to double, co they're going to double cover. Uh, you know, Diego Hunter, but I think what you need to do here is how, uh, how good would play action work here, Mark? Fake it to three, you know, homes up in the middle, and then go to like these little short, a slant pass to Zach Thomas, or maybe a screen to Diego Hunter. You, got mean, you can't, don't try to get the big play on every play. Second and 10 from the 46. Trey Holmes is back there. They fake it to him. Lowry tackled down by, again, Joseph Tyree, who's had a big game tonight. Now it puts him in a third and long situation. He lost about two yards in the play. Yep, and now it's going to be a big third down here. See if East View can answer right here. The defense is giving them in, but they need to pick up a first. They just need Tom right here to pick up a first down. Third and 12. I wonder if Zach Thomas will factor into this one. There's the throw. This one incomplete, nearly picked off. Trying to make the diving interception is number 13, Daquan Wilson. And now Eastern View will have to punt. Well, Lowry had to hurry that, Mark. He's being blitzed you know, from the backside. If he didn't get rid of it, he was going to get popped. So now it forces Eastern View to punt. Again, that was a quick three and out right there. Really was. A minute 48 to play here in the third quarter. Our score, 30 to 23, in favor of Dinwiddie. Zach Thomas standing just inside the 30-yard line. Bad, bad snap. Does a nice job of fielding it. And he kicks this one away from Josiah Williams, who tried to field it shy of going out of bounds. Unable to do so. They'll have it at the 35-yard line. So pretty good field position for Dinwiddie. 
as this offense comes back onto the field with a minute 41 to play here in the third quarter. They lead by seven. And, you know, what are we going to do here defensively? I think you cannot give up a big play here to Dinwiddie. It just uh, – Dinwiddie just stopped your offense, but you just got to play hard and continue to play like you've been playing in the second half and see if you can get a turnover, a force a three and out. All right, Dinwiddie from its own 35. Davon Pope, the man in motion. They pick it to him, and the quarterback keeps it. Try to get away from that tackle by Cohen King. He got across the 40, out to about the 42. Picked up seven yards on the play. We'll bring up second and three. He's just tough to bring down. Yep. He's very shifty. Second and three. Sort of it. Nope, they fake it to him. And he runs right into Avery Seitz and company. They stand him up, stop his progress. It'll bring up third Come down. And you can tell he's already got his shirt ripped up, his long sleeve shirt. You can see it on his, on his left arm. It's already got a big hole in it. Third down and three. And then what he, here comes some pressure. Here comes Cody Howard chasing the quarterback. He runs away from him. And this, let's check the spot here on this one. This will be close to that first down marker. Clock's going to run. We haven't moved that uh, down marker yet, Steve. That's a good sign because it would be, down. yeah, fourth and three. They must have stopped him for, well, he did pick up two yards. Brings up fourth and one, and then when he plays it conservatively, they're going to punt this one away. Well, yeah, they're going to get it in the fourth quarter. You have 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter. You gotta just watch out for each of you doesn't jump off sides. And they get the punt away before the end of the third. Diego Hunter from the 25 yard line. Looking for some running room out there. Trying to create some. He created a little bit that the third quarter has expired. So at the end of the third, it's Dinwiddie 30, Eastern View 23. We'll take a break and come back for the fourth quarter with Eastern View in possession from its own 30-yard line. Stay tuned. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you've made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield, Toyota, Chevrolet, and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. Welcome back to our broadcast and to the start of the fourth quarter here at Dinwiddie High School. Mark O'Connell, Steve Peacock, Johnny Crosscheck with you tonight on behalf of the Culpa Media Network as we, as we start the fourth quarter. Eastern View has possession at its own 30, trailing by 7, 30 to 23. And a quick throw to Diego Hunter. Not much room to work out there, but he got uh, close to the 35-yard line. And Mark, I still think you need to fake 
get that defense of Zakia and two people and fake to them and look for Zach Thomas on the other side or maybe uh, Leak, Brett Leak, either one. Yeah, he's out there, number 15, top of your screen with number 10, Zach Thomas. Yep. That's Leak and Thomas. Diego under number three in the slot right now. Three receivers to the right. Second down and six. Go with your possession receivers here. Lowry. Throwing. Oh, what a catch by Zach Thomas at the 45-yard line. I'll tell you what, is he clutch or not? Yes, he is. He's, he, that's why he's all-state receiver, Mark, is right there, is Zach Thomas. That was not hit, an easy catch. He will go up and grab and make, make the catch and get that football. But that's what you got to go to. Go to your possession receivers make them. If you can get eight, nine yards every pass play, you're going to drive it down the field. That's just going to set up your running game. Got the Dimity 44 after that catch. And the Cyclones have it first and 10. That was they picked up a 22 yards on the pass play from Lowry to Zach Thomas. Throws again. This one caught by Leak. Brett Leak. Blake Leak, rather. Blake. Blake. Brett Blake. Brett was Brett's at the Naval Academy. <laughs> yeah. Blake Leak catches this one. Picked up seven or eight yards. Out to the 36-yard line. Valerie had a little trouble bringing that one in. Now he throws downfield. And we got a penalty yeah. flag in. Yep. Going right there in the coverage spot. Yep, and that was brought on by Dega Hunter. He kind of slowed down and let mm -hmm. that receiver run into him while the ball was in the air. Smart play by Diego Hunter, Mark. It's going to be interference against Dinwiddie, 15 yards, and that was a very smart. Diego Hunter knew the ball wasn't going to be couldn't be able to catch, and now they're discussing whether it was a catchable ball. Well, let me ask you this. Would that be comparable to what Bill Lane Beer used to do with those yeah, flops? Yeah. I mean, well, drawing the foul? Well, he drawing the foul, but basically what he did was he slowed down enough and let that receiver run into him while the ball's in the air. The big discussion is, was it catchable? And it looks like it's going to be a penalty against Dinwiddie. All right, here comes the call. The man with the white hat. Pass interference against Eastern View. That play does call. The penalty does stand right. Yep. So mark it off from the 36-yard line, which was the line of scrimmage. So bring it down to the 21. Mm-hmm. Mark it off now. And now East View, but they've got a score here, Mark. I, I just say they, they cannot get out of this area right here in this red zone. They're knocking on the red zone without any points. 11 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Cyclones now have it first and 10 from the Generals 21. They fake it to Holmes. They swing it up to Diego Hunter. 20, 15, 10, 5. Lowers the shoulder. And he can't quite get into the end zone. He's down there at about the 1. A 20-yard pickup by Diego Hunter. And I thought he was going to get in, Mark. It shows how strong he is. Yeah. But it also shows how strong Dinwiddie you know, got the leverage. is able to stop him. But the ball's going to be on the 1-yard line. Eastern View knocking on the door. Great play call. Swing pass. Fake it to, uh, to Holmes. Swing pass to Diego Hunter. First and goal Cyclone from the one yard line. In position here to score a game tying touchdown. Here's Diego Hunter. Diego Hunter looks like he has squeezed his way into the end zone and it is a touchdown. Get out the sound of the storm sirens, batting down the hatches. Diego Hunter from one yard out to Cyclone. Touchdown. 10.32 to play in the Fourth quarter, and the Cyclones are a point after touchdown away from tying this ball game up. Big extra point here, Mark. Big sure. extra point. All right, the holders, Till Butler. The kicker is Garrett Hutchinson. And there's the snap and the hold. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. We are tied up. 30-30 with 10-32 to play in this one. What a ball game. Yep. What a football game we had tonight. And the crowd is hushed, Mark. They were raucous when Easterby was, I mean, didn't when he went up 30 to 16, but now Easterby's clawed their way back. And it's a whale of a ball game. Ten minutes to go here in the ball in the game. Tied up 30-30. Now it's coming down to the defenses on both sides. Well, it sure is. Well, this broadcast is made possible by Triple Image. Make your clothes speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image at 829-1050. Maybe we can get an update on that uh, Culpepper score as well. But what a game here, 30-30.
our score. Yeah, an update on the Louisa Monacan score, too, as well. Yeah, because the winner of tonight's game will play next week against the winner of the Monacan Louisa County game. If Dinwiddie wins, they'll play. It'll be here. If Eastern View wins, Eastern View will go on the road. Right, as a number four seed against either the number two Monacan or the number three Louisa County. Yep. Right, Steve? Yep. Here's a kickoff to uh, keep it short. You don't like that call. No, I don't because it gives a good team great field position. Yeah, like at the 39-yard line to yeah. be exact. And, I mean, you should kick it deep. I know you don't want to have run to, uh, risk of running it back, but now you got the ball in outstanding field position, and you've got a good team like Dinwiddie that can you know score at any moment. 30-30 our score. Dinwiddie's offense back on the field. That means Kamon Pope, the quarterback. Zion Sturdivant, they're running back. Sturdivant, the ball carrier, looking for an opening. And he almost bursts away from that. And the uh, Cyclones came over near the 40-yard line to stop him after a two-yard pickup. It'll yeah, be second and eight. And Sturdivant, like I said, Army is being recruited by the Army. He's a very good student, very smart. And uh, he's a tough running back, too, to bring down, Mark. They cannot – they've uh, – I like what uh, Eastern View's done with the adjustments on the defense in the second half. They say you've got to bring these guys down. Sure of it. Leading ball. Carrier for the Dinwiddie this year. This one nearly picked off. It was uh, intended for Clay Trey Reese. Now a third down coming up, Steve. Another critical third down play here for both teams. Yep, and just got to contain Pope. Don't let him get outside. If you're going to put pressure on him. And watch out for Kayvon Pope out yep. there, number 81. Very dangerous receiver. Uh, I think, is, is he in the game at this point? Yes, he's over there and split. No, he is. You're right. He, he may is. not be in there. Interesting. Third and eight. All right, here's Pope. Going to set up the screen. He's got a receiver. It is Josiah Williams. They tackle him at the 45-yard line. That'll be short of a first down. It'll be fourth and three, I do believe. A fourth and three, and it looks like Dinwiddie is going to call, go for it here, Mark. Actually, it's more like a fourth and four, and they do line up to go for it. There's a gutsy play call by Dinwiddie, unless they're looking for the long snap count to draw Eastern View off sides, and now they come in quickly with their punt team, and Eastern View has to hustle as well to get, out and get their players on and off the field. Looks like both teams have lined up successfully. And here is the punt. Diego Hunter says for his players to get out of the way, this one rolls down inside the 25-yard line. Steve, go back to the Eastern View defense. They did its job again. They did its job again, Mark. Swarm the football. Now, this is where you want the patented Eastern View offense to use ball control and see if they can march down the field, Mark, and chew up a lot of clock. We'll see. But if it's the big play, if the touchdown presents itself, they're going to go for it. Well, we have eight minutes and 56 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Our score is tied 30 off. And Eastern G will have it back on offense. After a good job by their defensive teammates. They have it marked at the 23-yard line. Matt Lowry back there with Trey Holmes. Here's Lowry stepping up throwing. Oh, he tried to get it to Zach Thomas. And he let him maybe a little bit too much out there. Yeah, it looked like, you know, it, was, it had the right play, but he just didn't get enough air on it where Zach could run under it. And again, those, you know, I, I, this secondary for Dinwiddie is the weakest link. And I know he should be trying to exploit it, but they just got to be careful here. Well, we know Diego Hunter has had a big game for the Cyclones. Zach Thomas has had a big game. And uh, Matt Lowry here in the second half with his running ability yeah. and passing ability. Here's second down and 10 from the 23. They get it out to Diego Hunter. Here, Hunter makes a move. He's in space to get a first down yardage and more. And trying to strip the ball was uh, Kayvon uh, Pope. Instead, uh, it enabled Diego Hunter to get a little bit more running yards. And he got across the 40-yard line. Are you looking at a penalty flag? Uh, is there a flag or is that just a towel? I think it's, 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 it's a a white in color. Yeah. But, wow, what a run by Diego Hunter. Got across to the 42-yard line. That is a uh, in Dinwiddie territory. That was a that great was a, pass what, play. 25 yard play. All Diego Hunter. And now here's Holmes. Probably his most yards tonight. Well, watch fumbled. out. Looks like the ball and he fumbled. is fumbled. 
And if he fumbled, that would be his second one of the night. But they're not showing Dinwiddie ball. It looks yeah. like they got it back. And Holmes is driving. It's uncharacteristic of Trey Holmes, Mark. He's mm -hmm. dropped the ball three times trying to get that extra yard because he's trying to bring the ball out of his arm. He needs to hold on to that football. I know Coach Hatfield and staff are over there saying, you've got to hang on to that football. They have the ball marked at the 32-yard line. Where it is, second down and four for the Cyclones. And the clock runs at 8.07 to play. Excuse me. I just need Steve in the sore <laughs> knee. But <laughs> well, was that your good that knee? That was my good knee. That All was right. a good knee from the 32-yard line. Here's Matt Lowry. Bearing it out here. Trying to get up under it was the intended receiver there, Noah five, five, Proctor. Three, three. He wanted a penalty flag, but they won't get one. And he uh, threw into double coverage. That's the other thing Matt Lowry's got to watch here because it looks like uh, Dinwiddie's playing like a zone to cover, you know, a zone and rotating the safety over. Whoever's running down the deep pattern, and it becomes double coverage. So you've got to be careful. Don't throw an interception. So it's third down and four now for the Cyclones from the Generals 32. Big third down call for Eastern U. Lowry got Zach Thomas on the slant. He's got the reception. He's got a first down, and that'll move the sticks. That'll move the sticks, Mark. That was a perfect play. Good pass. Good catch by uh, – good throw by Matt Lowry. Good catch by Thomas. Seven-yard pickup and a first down. The line of scrimmage is at 25. They reset the sticks. 7.40, clock ticking. Fourth quarter. We are tied up 30 all. What a football game being played here tonight. For sheer entertainment purposes, it'd be hard to beat this one, wouldn't it? You sure would, Mark. Everyone's got – it looks like a timeout. Time out taken by Eastern View, and uh, we'll take one as well. We'll come back when the action is set to resume. Stay tuned. Not everyone is an HVAC expert. Luckily, with 20 years of experience, Able Heating and Air can answer any and all questions you may have about your system. Peace of mind and knowledge that you made the right choice because they are able to keep your home comfortable. Able Heating and Air, 718-7556. What do your clothes say about you? Well, if they were screen printed or embroidered at Triple Image, they can speak volumes. Originality, professionalism, experience. Your clothes can speak volumes with custom printing and embroidery from Triple Image, 829-1050. Battlefield Automotive is proud to continue support of our high school youth and the Culpeper community. Winner of the prestigious Ford President's Award for a record 13 consecutive years. Battlefield, Toyota, Chevrolet, and Ford offers award-winning service and unprecedented selection of new and used vehicles. Battlefield Automotive, a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. Finding the right outerwear for the job is difficult. Luckily, you'll find Carhartt clothing, Red Wing, and Irish Center boots. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit with CFC Farm and Home Center. Found in Sons Funeral Chapels has made it their business to provide solutions during difficult times for over a quarter of a century. During that time, they've also made an investment in our youth through football, basketball, softball, baseball, lacrosse, skateboarding, and 4-H, among other projects. Good luck to tonight's teams and do your best. Every lifelong relationship starts with day one. At Virginia Community Bank, we'll talk about how you can bank with us for life. With 40 plus years of experience in Culpeper and beyond, it's our privilege to help clients achieve their goals, short term, long term, and everywhere in between. Bank with us anytime. Bank with us for a lifetime. All right, welcome back to our broadcast. After the timeout, the Cyclones have it first and 10 from the General's 25 yard line. We're tied up 30 all. Matt Lowry throwing. This one! It's all! A diving interception made by Josiah Williams to end the Cyclone threat. The mark that was right there. It's a great interception, but Matt threw it into double coverage. And you throw it in, you throw it into double coverage, you're gonna get, you know, you, you, sometimes you're gonna pay for it. But we can go to replay here and look at it right here. And look right here, Matt Lowry dropping back, trying to find Diego Hunter right there in the crease. In a, in a little, uh, you know, right down a skinny post, right down the middle. But the great uh, defense by Dinwiddie just dove right in front of it, intercepted it. Missed the opportunity for the Cyclones. They had it first and 10 from the Generals 25. The turnover gives the ball back to them. Play action. They throw it. They got Williams on the slant. He got across the 20 yard line. He picks up the first down on the quick strike. 
And they move it out to the 23, picked up 13 yards. No huddle, they move quickly here. Sturdivant, the ball carrier. Nowhere to go. They wrap him up and sling him down. Zach Brown and others in on the tackle for the Cyclones. Second down and nine coming up here. Yeah, but a big, yeah, big defensive series here for East View. They got that, the interception now. East View now has three turnovers on the game to one turnover for Dinwiddie. Second down and nine from the 24. Here's Pope. Play action. Jenny Mack there. Here comes a little bit of pressure. He got away from it. Here is Pope directing, making people miss, and they finally bring him down at the 29. He picked up five. It'll bring up third and four. He is so hard to wrap up back yep. there, Steve. Yep, I mean, he, you've got to be, when you get a hand on him, you've got to wrap up and you got to hold on. Third down He's and four shifty. now from very the 29 shifty. yard line. The clock moving at 6.15 and counting here in the fourth quarter. We're tied up 30 all. Big defensive play here, Mark, because I don't see him going for it on fourth here if they don't make it. So it's going to have to be a big play here for Eastern View defense. Here comes the Cyclones showing pressure. They're going to try to get to Pope. He's got time. He throws it out there. He's got a receiver at the 35-yard line. That will be a first down. That pass hauled in by Clay Trey Reese. And, Mark, that was too easy. That was way too soft coverage mm -hmm. by uh, number two. Cameron Spangler on that play. He needed to be up closer, and he just gave up. That was just easy, too easy right there. All right, they pitch it to Sturdivant. And the Cyclones wrap him up. Cody Howard, Zach Brown, and Jacob Ashwell combined for the tackle for Eastern View. And no gain on the play, second and 10. Clock moving. 5.20 to play, fourth quarter. We're tied up 30 all. Second and 10 generals from their own 36. Pope, he's going to keep it. Breaking tackles, breaking tackles. Still breaking tackles. In the open field is the race. There he goes. Pope from 64 yards. Steve had three opportunities to wrap him up, and they couldn't bring him down. Mark, that was just poor tackling right there. By Eastern View, they had they had him stopped at the line of scrimmage, but did not wrap him up. Let's go to replay, and I'll show you. Right here, here's a simple poke. He gets the snap, and he just he's doing just a simple run off the left side, and he broke three tackles, and then it always was. He's at the second level in the end zone, touchdown. Poor tackling by Eastern View on that play. You know, he must be awfully strong, awfully athletic to be able to break such tackles. They had, looks like, three shots at him. And he just sort of uh, discarded the would-be tacklers. Um, made it look so easy. Because Here's they didn't wrap up his fundamentals. Oh, it's it's nice fundamentals, nice. and they were not fundamentally found nice on that defensive nice. play. You cannot just go in and try to hit him like a missile. And you want to bounce off him. He's too strong and athletic. You have to hit him and wrap him up. So and they a game, didn't do that. A game that was tied 30-30 with Dinwiddie in possession, second and 10 from the 36-yard line. Your quarterback, Kamon Pope, rambled 64 yards, breaking tackles for a touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown. The point after by Todd Anspach makes it 37-30. And now Eastern View, with 5.02 to play, will be assigned. Uh, their assignment next is they, they, they have to score and uh, tie this one up to keep pace uh, because they're actually in that position. We were tied up 30 all. And uh, or score and try to go for two and win it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, again, it's just, again that, that play right there. Each of you is only having self to blame on that play right there. It wasn't anything special by Dinwiddie. It just said they just didn't wrap up the quarterback and make it and make a, a good tackle on him. All right, Todd and Spock will kick off. With the generals up 37 to 30. They kick away with this one. This one fielded by Cameron Spangler. He hands it off to Diego Hunter. Little Diego Hunter trying his best to make people miss. He made one the first uh, defender miss, but then they wrapped him up yep. after he got out to near the 20-yard line. 
So it looks like the Cyclones are going to have to go 80 yards to tie this one up. And Mark, they can do it. I mean, it, it, it's not impossible for them not to do it. It's just that they've got four minutes and 53 seconds again. This is their season right here, I, I think, on this series. They, but, they can't go three now, and they're talking right now. The offense talking to Coach Hatfield. He says, look, this is our time. But if you want, this is the season right here. And you got to make up for that poor defensive uh, tackling on that, on that previous series to allow them to score. They've marked it at the uh, 21, I believe. And Mount Lowell. Threw it behind the intended receiver, Diego Hunter. And Mark, what they got on also too is they're going to be keying on Diego Hunter. Yeah, I think you've got to use uh, Leak, Brett Leak, and, and uh, Zach Thomas here on this drive because if you don't, I mean, they're really keying on Hunter and Holmes. Well, the line of scrimmage is at 23. That's where it's second and 10. Cyclones struggling by seven. Now here's Matt Lowry again. On the slant, Zach Thomas goes up into the air, brings it down, makes the first defender miss. He picks up first down yardage just shy of the 40-yard line. Zach Thomas again, a clutch catch. That's what you got to do, Mark. Right there, go to Zach Thomas. Go to your profession receiver. Get the 10 yards. Get the chew up some little bit of clock because you really don't want to turn this ball over to Dinwiddie on the offense. You want to control your destiny right here. Picks up 15 yards to Thomas. It's first and 10 now from the 38-yard line. Matt Lowry. Up there in his flank is Trey Holmes. And he's going for Diego Hunter. Hunter trying to bring it in, unable to do so. Blanketed coverage out there by number 13, Daquan Wilson. And see, the other thing is, too, Diego, I used to, too. He's not used to having defenders keep up with him on speed wise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when he's got some speed, so they can definitely keep up with him. They do, Steve. They have speed, they have athleticism. Yeah. They have some Division I mean, One and, talent. And they're well coached. But it's still anybody's game. That's true. Second and 10 from the 38. Hunter in motion. They hand it off to him. And he can't get on track. He got out to the 40-yard line. That's about it. And that's going to bring up a third and about eight yards to go here for Eastern View. And, Mark, the key is if you don't get here, do you punt it away? Or you give them big field position and, you know, because they got a good field goal kicker. They kick the field goal, the game is over. Yeah, I mean, you feel like with the time left, you'd have to play the field position yeah. still. Yeah. You? But third and eight, I start to think about Zach Thomas here. Let's see what Matt Lowry thinks. Uh, he swings it out to Diego Hunter. There's Hunter. He's going to be stopped at about the 45-yard line. That's where it's going to bring up fourth down and three. And now you get decision time. 3.44 here to go. You turn it over here on downs. You, know, you give them your excellent field position. All they got to do is go a few yards in field goal position for Anfox. So it looks like they're going to go for it. Well, they're lining up to go for it. Fourth down and three. This one caught for a first down catch. That was made by Blake Leak. And that'll move the sticks and keep the drive going. Wow, gutsy call, fourth and three, and Leak delivers. Well, just, uh, they're in uh, Dinwiddie's side of, of midfield, uh, the half field there, Steve, They're on the Dinwiddie side of it at the 48-yard line. 325 and moving. Yep, first and 10. Here's Lowry, airing it up. Oh, he had a receiver out there open. And that was Noah Proctor. He overthrew him. Yeah. Now we'll have second and 10 coming up from the Dinwiddie 48 yard line. 321 to play here in the fourth quarter. Dinwiddie up by seven, 37 to 30. Well, Mark, that was a beautiful play call right there. If Lauer just been more accurate, he was right there on, if he'd been on target, he'd been at a big play. All right, second and 10 from the 48. Bring it out to Diego Hunter. Incomplete. Now we're going to have a third and eight. That was well defense, though, by Dimwitty. They saw that coming, Mark. Mm -hmm. They've seen that. Now you have a third and eight. Now you have a third and ten. So you're going to have to, you know, figure out. you got two downs here, that's for sure, with the clock the way it's going. There's the clock. It stopped at 317, the incomplete pass. Third and ten from the 48. Now here's Lowry. Oh, 
Incomplete, overthrew Zach Thomas. In the coverage is Sardell Lucius. And now he got a fourth and 10 from the 48. And for Eastern View, he could come down to this play right here. Yeah, yeah but you come down here. And I think he's Eastern View, I would call a timeout. You got two left. You got to dial up a, a play here to get you 10 yards. And it looks like they, they're going to call timeout, Mark. All right. Well, we'll tell you this broadcast is made possible by Found and Sons, investing in youth at all levels to help make tomorrow's leaders. Found and Sons at 825-3530. we got a big play coming up here on the, off the timeout. The Cyclones will have it fourth and ten from the Dinwiddie 48-yard line with 3.13 to play. And, you know, um, it's at the high school level, you think you almost have to go for it here because 3.13 is not a lot of time uh, to give the ball back to Dinwiddie. Right. If the ball, if the game was still tied, they'd punt. Yeah. They'd punt here. But now with 3.13 to go in the ball game, down by a touchdown, you know, I mean, the way Dinwiddie can run the ball and control that offense – you know, control that clock, and all they need to do is get about 30 yards to get in the field goal range with their kicker to put it away. I think you got to play the odds here. You got to come up with a play, fourth down, and you got 10 yards. And you got to, you know, you got to get good blocking by your offensive line up front, give Matt Lowry protection. But Matt Lowry's got to recognize, too, if the pass isn't there, he's got to tuck it in and run. Mm -hmm. And he's got to figure out if he, if they drop back and on passing and they're way wide open, he's got to run and see if he can pick up 10 yards. Well, the game may be decided on this very play here. Fourth and 10, Cyclones from the Dinwiddie 48-yard line. They fake it to Diego Hunter. Now they throw. And behind the intended receiver, but he caught it. Zach Thomas, Thomas. what a catch. <laughs> and we talked about it being clutch. You can't be any <laughs> more clutch, clutch than that. that. That's Jerry Westlake. <laughs> he caught it from behind, Mark. I thought oh he dropped it. Oh, my gosh. What a tremendous catch by Zach Thomas. It was a ball, like you said, thrown behind him. And he dove for it with the ball thrown behind. And he still <laughs> caught it for the first down. The fans Unbelievable. Are, fans thought it hit the ground. From the 32-yard line now. Well, he airs it out. Here's a receiver open at the 10-yard line. Nolan Proctor! And he's in from 32 yards out. And what a beautiful thrown pass by Matt Lowry. Steve, you can't dial it up you better than that. You can't dial it better than that. Cyclone touchdown. Lowry to uh, Noah Proctor. Noah Proctor. Now... What do you do here? They're going to go for the extra point, Mark. I think you have to go for the tie. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd lose it on a two-point play. Yeah. The game, you didn't get it in. you you got to be thinking about overtime. your chances in overtime. Yep. Wow, what a tremendous Just drive by Eastern View. Hats off to those players, Steve. Yep. I mean, they haven't been in this position all year. And I know it sounds corny, but they're showing it's this point after ties it up. 37 all. This was a position Eastern View's never been in this season. Yep. And I know it sounds corny, but to use words like resilient <laughs> and that sort of thing, but that's exactly heart. what they've done. Resilience. And heart. Resiliency. Yeah, and heart. So this was a drive. It started on Eastern View's own 23-yard line. And they were looking at a uh, fourth and three once, and they got a first down. Then they were looking at a fourth and ten, and they picked up uh, a 15-yard uh, pass play to Zach Thomas keep the drive open, and then a beautiful 32-yard touchdown pass from Matt Lowry and Noah Proctor. This game is one where neither team's going to deserve to lose. Someone's going to have to, right. but this has been one of the most entertaining football games at any level I've seen for a while. It is. It is. Me too, Mark. I agree with you, and I think what you got to do here now for Eastern View, I wouldn't pooch kick this. I would kick it down the field. Do not do this uh, little pooch kick and give them the ball to the 50-yard line. they got a good field goal kicker. They're going to have to kick this away. Well, except that uh, they got a guy who can return it the distance. Kick return, Josiah Williams. 13 returns, 193 yards, 68 the longest, and three touchdowns. They're well aware. This one, a short kick, fielded inside the 30-yard line. Straight ahead goes the return man. Good field position. He'll get out across the 40-yard line. Now, Dinwiddie. With 2.35 to play, that's ample time for this offense to be thinking about the winning score. And, and also, Dinwiddie's got the weapon, too. They've got that good field goal kicker. They sure do. Not really sure what his range is, but he could be the difference if it comes down to that. First and 10, general from their own 40. 
Here's Sturdivant. And they wrap him up at the line of scrimmage. And that was uh, Garrett Robinson. Diego Hunter coming in to make the tackle. And no game. Gotta, and you got to watch Pope, Mark. You got to have, I think you got to have a spy linebacker or somebody watching Kamon Pope, you know, and make sure he doesn't get outside containment. Here it is on second 10. They fake it to start of it. Here comes some pressure. Just Pope pushes him away. That's Robinson who's pushing away. Now he has to heave it downfield incomplete. How many people could do that to buy that sort of time? I know. That shows how strong he just pushes off of that one arm. And, uh, you know, but you got to give number nine for, uh, you know, uh, you got to give uh, Paris Owen and um, it looks like Cody Howard big credit for coming in there and still putting the pressure. But you got to keep dialing up the pressure. Big third down, third and ten here. Right here, third and ten, like I say, on the 40 yard line. Big third down for both teams. A minute 56 to play in this one, in regulation, that is. We're tied up 37 off. What you got to do here, Marcus, do not let Dinwiddie pick up the first down because they'll probably punt it here. And Pope, the ever dangerous quarterback. Can they put any pressure on him? This one caught inside the 40 yard line by Clay Trey Reese. Cameron Spangler on the tackle moves the sticks. Dinwiddie. That was a good pass, Mark. Good catch. He had it was well covered, but Pope put that ball in there. The market of the Eastern View 38 yard line, where it's first and 10. All right, here's Pope again. Throwing. This one incomplete. They go back to Clay Trey Reese. And Cameron Spangler there on the coverage, incomplete pass. He collected some of the turf on the helmet. Well, Spangler's got to learn. He cannot let uh, that receiver get inside position on him. He's got to, you know, he made a good play there. But uh, Therese is giving a good, uh, getting good inside position. And that's uh, can be uh, work right against Eastern View. Because uh, Dinwiddie's going to look to only get about 10 to 15 yards or in field goal range. Second and 10 from the 38. Here he goes, Pope. He just won't go down, Steve. He just keeps running. Well, they're trying to rip the football out of his arms instead of tackling it. Mark, that's the problem. You know, he can still stay up if they sit there and they're trying to rip the football out of his arms instead of trying to bring him down. Well, he picked up 18 yards on that, all the way down to the 20-yard line where it's first and 10. There he goes again. And this time they make the tackle. They're going to try to run this down, Mark, and kick a field goal. I know that's what they're playing for. Got down to the 15. And the clock down to less than a minute to play. In fact, it's 55 seconds and counting. It's second down and about six from the 15-yard line. I think you're right. They're going to work that clock down. Here's Sturdivant, the ball carrier. And they stop him near the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a third down. They'll let the clock run down. I think you're right. They're going to go for that game-winning field goal. Yeah. They've got just a kicker to do it. Yeah, they got just a kicker to do it. They're just going to line him up in the center of the field. Third down. Here's Pope on the run. Running around, trying to set it up. And they tackle him. And now they're going to let the clock run down. So it's uh, running down to 18. 17, and they stop it there for the timeout. And so on fourth down and the timeout, they will bring their field goal kicker out. That's Todd and Spock. He's been virtually flawless this year, Steve. Yeah. And uh, he's yeah. going to be in a position after this timeout to kick the game-winning field goal. 37 all is our score. 17 seconds to play. Fourth and five and they'll be setting up for the field goal here and you know mark you win or lose eastern view if they lose it's on the field you can't fault them they played a way over ball game they fought back showed a lot of heart resilience and coming back 30 yard field goal attempt coming up to the line of scrimmage is 13 they'll mark it at the 20 and then it'll be 10 yards for the end zone 30 yard field goal attempt coming up another timeout called we'll say this broadcast is made possible by battlefield automotive a keystone of service and a cornerstone of our community. Battlefield Automotive at 547-3673. And CFC Farm and Home Center, hometown service since 1932. From head to toe, it's easy to outfit 
with CSC Farm and Home Center at 825-2200. So after the timeout, we'll be looking at a 30-yard field goal attempt to be delivered by Todd and Spock. If I was Eastern View, I'd call timeout right before and ice them a little bit. And the holder will be Kamon Pope, who's also the quarterback. Would you like to see a field goal block and return for oh. a touchdown? <laughs> Can you or a field goal block, anyway, just send it to overtime. Send it to overtime. All right, from 30 yards out with 17 seconds remaining in the game, in regulation, rather. And Spot, if he connects here, will give his team a three-point lead with only a few seconds left for the Cyclones to have any chance of coming back. So they give him two seconds. They give him 19 seconds. All right, put a couple seconds back on the clock. 19 seconds to play. Clock stopped. 30-yard field goal attempt coming up momentarily. What a game. A snap. The hole. We got a whistle. Oh, they're going to bring it back. Bring it back. Call timeout. Call timeout. Oh, yeah. Well, you knew they were going, so they had to time it right. Yep. And without the timeout, it would have been a good field goal. Yep. He's got a strong leg. You can see that. So, yeah. Wow. So now it's uh, 15 seconds to go. So, but that would have been good mark from 40 or 50 yards right there. Hansbach had a good uh, foot on it. And now he's going to be asked to do it again. Though. Yep. <coughs> And maybe he will. Maybe he has ice running through his veins. <laughs> you know, it seems like the good kickers do. Yep, they? they just sure do. Wow. Adam Vinatieri. <laughs> and then, you know, look, you still got the kickoff. Yeah. And you know you're going to have Eastern View. Well, look at Fox Fainy did against Culpepper. I know so. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here's on Spock again on after the Eastern View timeout. Try to connect from 30 yards out and likely win this one for Dinwiddie. That last snap yeah. was a little bit behind uh, Pope. He was able to get it down. Better snap this time. Gets it down. Kick is up. It's good! That's good. From 30 yards out, it's 40 to 37 Dinwiddie with 13.3 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock. So Steve, Eastern View will have time for a kickoff return and maybe one play. One play, kickoff return, one play, Mark, and see if they can, you know, mm -hmm. you know, miracles do happen. But right now, Dinwiddie, and that's what good teams do and champion teams, the championship teams do. They convert it when they need to. And now Eastern View is trying to find a way on the kickoff, see what they can do to uh, get win this ball game. But, you know, Mark, hats off to Eastern View. They did come in here. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, they, Dinwiddie was heavily favored. They gave uh, Dinwiddie everything they could handle. So uh, it's a whale of a ball game, evenly matched teams. But we'll see. It's still not over yet. No, it sure isn't. What do you think the strategy here for the Eastern View if you're the uh, your kickoff team? I mean, look at the time you have, 13.3 seconds. You want to try to win it on a kickoff return? Or do you want to try to save some time for your offense? Well, I mean, I think you, you, what you do is you fall on the ball, fair catch, and then, you know, you got Diego Hunter, you got two plays pretty much to see if you can get a, uh, a touchdown, you know, and a broken play. We'll see here. I mean, it's. Uh, or, you know, Garrett Hutchinson, what's his range? Yep. You know? So he may be tested. No, we'll see. But Ansbach can really boot it, so I look for him to put it deep, Mark. And they want, they're going to, Dinwood's going to want Eastern View. If they got to win it, they got to go about 80 yards. All right, here's Ansbach's kick. Straight away he goes. From the 10-yard line. We get back to Diego Hunter. They're going to go razzle-dazzle trying to win this thing. Here's Hunter. They stop him after he crossed the 30. They've got four <laughs> seconds to play. Time for one play. Likely that's the only one they'll get. One, one play. One play. Just go. 
<laughs> yeah, they're out here to hit the press box saying just put everyone in the back. <laughs> he wants big Pope in the yeah, back. Yeah. That would be Kayvon Pope. Yeah. The player headed to Ohio State University. Because there's not gonna be enough time to get out of bounds and kick field goals. The only thing they gotta do, they got one play. Mm -hmm. They got one play. You know, they're going to be some razzle dazzle here, but they see if they can. Uh, if you believe in miracles, you better call on the good Lord above right now. <laughs> 40 to 37. 4.1 seconds to play. This will be the last play we think of regulation. Here's Lowry. This one's going to be oh incomplete, and that's how the game's going to end. And Jen Woody has run this one 40 to 37. In a whale of a football game, Steve. I know it's disappointing for Eastern Jews, but they certainly acquitted themselves well here tonight. Yep, it is. And Mark, you know, it's not, you know, considered an upset. Jim Woody was the number one team, but it was a whale of a ball game. Eastern Jews season comes to an end, heartbreakingly stunning to an end, and uh, to score 40 to 37. But they, but you get hats off to Eastern View. They played very well, Mark. They had to, they came from behind, they showed heart, showed resiliency. And uh, they showed a lot of, uh, you know, they had a lot of fight in them to come back, and they played a whale of a ball game. They, don't ha they should not hang their heads. They're just in a tough region and a tough draw, but they had an excellent season. Well, and let's talk a little bit about that in the time we have left, because here in the playoffs, you, you either win and move on, or you lose and you're done. They lose and they're done, but that doesn't take away from the great season they had. Let's sum it up, the season they did have before this loss tonight. And, you know, I was just trying to listen there, right there, Mark, see if they were playing Monica in there, but they're, uh, Dinwiddie's going to have a home game next week. But, I, I mean, in answer to your question, I, I, East of you, they acquitted themselves well. They had a few turnovers, but they've never run up to a team like the caliber of Dinwiddie. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, during the regular season, that kind of hurt, the, I mean, that kind of hurt them a little bit coming in here because they've never really been tested. And uh, Dinwiddie's such a good team and with their speed, and that really bothered Eastern View. But, again, hats off to Eastern View. They did, they did everything they could to win this ball game. They just had too – they just scored, and then they tied it up. They just had too much time left for Dinwiddie and that uh, came on Pope. And he, him and Sturdivant were able to bring the ball down there and uh, – Get it in field goal range for Dinwiddie to, you know, make the field goal. But the other thing is, hey, go back to the third quarter where uh, Pope, uh, early fourth quarter, we scored on that 64-yard mm -hmm. run touchdown. Great athletic play by Pope, but poor tackling by Eastern View. And, uh, you know, you can look back on a lot of different aspects of the game where everything went wrong. But you know what? I'm still not going to fault any of the Eastern View. Their players played hard. They, they, they represented uh, Culpepper very well. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough way to end the season, tough way for those seniors, Diego Hunter, the you know, last game of the season to go out like that. But, uh, you know, they just ran into a better team in the Dinwiddie Generals. And, Steve, players like Matt Lowry, Trey Holmes, uh, will return next year. As yeah. we'll, let's see, I was thinking about the juniors, Paris Owen, and some others, uh, Zach Brown. But how about the senior play of uh, players like uh, Diego Hunter, you mentioned. Uh, Zach Thomas, all those clutch catches tonight. Yep, you're yeah. right. But what a heck of a season. Eastern View had second straight year. They went uh, unbeaten in the regular season. They won last week's playoff game in fine fashion over Patrick Henry of Ashland. Tonight they come down and make a long road trip to Dinwiddie to play the number one rated team in the region, number one rated team in the state, 4A, and could have gone either way. Lost it on a uh, game-winning field goal by uh, uh, Todd Anspot. Final score, 40 to 37. Well, if the Blue Devils win tonight, we'll see them next week yep. if they're, uh, as they will continue their playoff hopes. But uh, that's gonna do it tonight for us. Uh, congratulations to both teams on a hard fought, uh, very entertaining football game. And uh, we'll wrap things up here at Dimity High School by saying for Steve Peacock, and Johnny Krawcheck, I'm Mark O'Connell saying thanks for watching and supporting Cyclones football as Cyclones fall tonight 40 to 37 to Dinwiddie, which moves on to play either Monica and Louisa County next week. And then we will be back in the broadcast if the Blue Devils win tonight. Which they were, 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 which were, they were leading big. 
at halftime against Thomas Jefferson, but we just don't have an update right All now. All right. Well, in the meantime, have a great weekend, everybody, and we hope to see you next week. Take care.